And hello, everyone. Welcome to This Week in Hospitality Digital Marketing, live show number 148. Yes, 148 times we've come to you each and every week. Oh, we're actually coming up to our third year anniversary in August. I think August 3rd is our official third year anniversary show. Um, but up until then, we'll keep doing it each week. Now, we're coming close to HSMAI's Rock, which is in Houston the week after next. Uh, and also during the same week is High Tech, which is the hospitality industries, technology, uh, electronics, I forget what that acronym was. But anyway, uh, thousands of booths of vendors that are, are um, it's kind of interesting, actually. It's a lot of fun. If you're in the hospitality space, if you want to know what's going on in the sense of innovation, changes, uh, technology, things that are of interest, uh, then that is by far the show to go to. It is the uh, destination, as it were, for it. It's actually kind of like a, a fun chance to meet friends that are in the industry you don't get to see often um, and also collaborate on what's being uh, innovation wise into the market when it comes to softwares. It, it used to be that years back, the show was predominantly about uh, laundry services, housekeeping, key generation, um, engineering stuff and so forth. And there's still a good portion of that in the show uh, vendor wise that are people there representing technologies that are associated with the actual operations of hospitality. Uh, but in, for the other part, it goes in now more into a software world, a service uh, providers uh, industry world, where it's about innovations as to revenue management, yielding, uh, inventory control, property management systems, CRM systems. Um, it has uh, really grown into more of a, a service display issue. Uh, it looks like Mr. Roberts, gonna, uh, no, Mr. Ed's going to be joining us. Sorry, uh, in just a moment. I will have some background noise today. It turns out that my office building is getting a new roof right over my head. <laughs> so I might have some background noise here and there about it. But then, hey, Mr. Ed, you have changed your looks. How are you? <laughs> well, finally, we're going to have a very smart, very intelligent conversation about hospitality, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. Would you introduce yourself as to whom you might be? Uh, my name is... Hi, my name is Harper from Flip2. I'm here to talk about my favorite hotel. My favorite hotel is the Omni Parker Hotel House, Boston. Really? And why is that? Why do you like it so much? I like it because... Um, like it has this shop with all these lobsters and lobsters are one of my favorite animals really and why are lobsters one of your favorite animals because um they go underwater and i love to swim makes perfect sense makes perfect sense now do you uh catch lobsters or do you just study them i mean where have you seen some lobsters? have you seen the difference between florida lobsters and maine lobsters and stuff I've actually never seen a lobster. I just looked at pictures of them. Uh, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. They're, and, and when you see a lot of them together, uh, it's, it's, it's sometimes scary because, I mean, you realize just how many there are. And, and you look, it's like, whoa, whoa. If I was on the bottom of the sea ocean, I would be uh, a little nervous about a big crowd of lobsters coming my way. Now, do you perhaps also eat lobsters or is that just something you don't do? I don't eat lobsters. You don't eat lobsters. You just like them, which is which is a lot better for yeah. the lobster. Yeah, yeah. But now the Omni has a lobster tank, and that's why you like them? Yeah. Well, oh, no. Okay, what else? No. It has a shop that has, like, uh, lobster uh, stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Do you know why, do you know in Boston why they like lobsters so much? No. How about the boat? No? Because they have a lot of lobsters up there. Pretty much. Uh, they just got a lot of lobsters. So they figured if there's a lot of lobsters, then they better go over and make sure that, you know, they, they put lobster stuff up. <laughs> Are you getting, is somebody giving you cues in your ears? Is somebody telling you something in your other ear? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <Nope. Right> yet. <laughs> uh, let me introduce oh, Mr. Robert Cole to you. Hi, Robert? how are you? Good. <laughs> we were just finding out so what. Uh, what's your, who are you? My name What's is Harper. Name? I work with Harper. I work with Flip Two. You work with Flip Two. Are you um, one of their really customer experience engineers who's really trying no. to hit the pre-millennial 
pre-millennial market? Is that your <laughs> is that your job? No, absolutely. No, he's the president. Are you yes, the chairman? The Are you the chairman? Vice president. Vice, Vice president. Who, who's your boss? <laughs> My dad. Nobody. See, she's really. Oh no no okay okay. First of all, you want his job. We can coach you. You can take over for him. Okay. You need to get the other people who work for Flip to all to gang up and make you president. Make you president. Yes. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah. That means your dad can spend spend more time at home. And your your dad can spend more time. <laughs> your dad can spend more time cleaning the house, cooking, probably doing some yard work, and probably repairing things. All those dad things that he really probably should be doing when he's he's busy working on that company. So he he has more yeah. bigger responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he needs to be home more. Yeah, yeah. he needs to be home more. I yeah. think so. So blockchain, huh? Is that one of your other favorite things too? Blockchain? It has to change the hospitality interest. <laughs> you think it will? <laughs> you're on your, you think it will change the industry? Yeah. I learned about it by hearing someone talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how most people have learned about it. Therefore, yeah. Therefore I'm a professional in blockchain hospitality. Yeah, but, and you will be, and you you probably are more of a professional than most people who think they are. Yeah. Yeah. What is the, so when what you is the name of the? Dad, are you? Oh, I was going to ask her if she was launching her own cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. If Do you, you like have blockchain, your own you cryptocurrency? Have... It needs a cool name. Cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Yeah. Say yeah, Harper coin. Yeah, Harper coin. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's outstanding! Where can I buy them? I'll send you an email. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, So, so when you travel with your dad, does your mom really run the travel like she does everybody else? Huh? You can't, I can't wait, wait. What? I can't wait to go on out on your boat. Yeah, you are. We, you, we will be next month. Mm -hmm. We're going to go out next month. Yep, we're going to pick you up over on the island, and we're going to go out. Do you want to fish, or do you just want to ride around on the boat? I want to fish. Okay, then we will fish. We will fish. Now, do you want to be captain or admiral when we're on the boat? Captain. All right. You're the captain of the boat when we go out. You get to tell us where to go when we go out there, okay? All right. All right. You just point where we're supposed to go, and we'll go there. Now, does that mean that your brother's going to be the admiral, or because the admiral ranks a little higher, but they don't actually drive the boat? So you're going to be driving the boat. My brother's going to be first mate. Okay, we'll make him first mate. He'll have to listen to you. Okay. Wait, That'll wait. Work out well. We need a job for your dad. Is there something? Can you be like one of the bumpers at the dock? Do you need another one of those? <laughs> My dad's going to clean the pump buckets. He's going to be what? <laughs> My dad's going to clean the chum buckets. Yeah, he's going to be the, the chum bucket stick swab. Yeah. 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 No, he, he'll, be in the, he'll be in the back with the fish. He'll take care of the fishing rods and the bait. How's that? He'll make sure that yeah. all, the, all the, put the, him, the, yeah, the fishing rods are good. Put them in the scuppers with a stovepipe on them. That's what you want to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will be real, on the boat. Real old school, real old school buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we will have fun on the boat when we see you in the next month. Yes, we're going to go out and have some fun. We'll go up. Uh, there's a really, really pretty island that I want to show you guys. That is uh, nobody can get to it unless you're on a boat. And it's really, it's great to find shells. Do you like shells? Like yes. the seashells and yes, stuff. I love she seashells. In fact, I went yep. to the beach yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where'd you go? Which beach? New Smyrna. New Smyrna. New Smyrna Beach. Mm -hmm. Well, the beaches over here are, I think, are a little nicer because they have shells, more shells on them. We have more shells, yeah. less waves. So when you make it over, we'll go and find some cool shells because the island that we we'll go to, not a lot of people are at, so you find some really cool big shells. So we'll go up there and we'll find some cool shells. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if, if you do Bitcoins and you like blockchain and, and all the other fun stuff, Harper, Harper uh, when coins. are you going to take... Harper coins Harper, are Harper, replacing Harper Bitcoin. Bitcoin. That's what it is. Cryptocurrency, Harper coins. That's the only one. Yes, exactly. Yes. And then 
then um, you'll be taking over Flipchu while you uh, real soon from your dad because he doesn't know about all that stuff. He doesn't he doesn't believe in blockchain. So you'll just take over the whole company from him. How's that? I'll help you. you. My, we'll help you. You know my dad can hear you right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, that, this is this is a this is a service to the entire hotel industry. We think some new blood at Flip Two will really be yeah. the thing that can help that company really take off. And you really seem to be the type of person that, if I was on the board of directors of Flip Two. I would say I Harper vote. should be. I, I think Harper should be You're CEO, running. chief executive okay. officer. You have my vote. You have my vote too. <laughs> I want to talk about kid-friendly hotels. You do. We can talk about kid-friendly hotels. I love kid-friendly hotels. Kid -friendly hotels. What do What do you think is What do you like about kid-friendly hotels? What makes it kid-friendly for you? Well, I think they should have bunk beds. All All okay. of them only bunk beds. And video games in the room. Okay. Uh, what is your now, favorite if, hotel? What is your favorite hotel that you have ever stayed in? And I'm asking you, Harper, not your dad. What is the fa your favorite hotel that you ever stayed in? I like it. I like the um, the hotel at Daytona Beach. The hard one. The Hard Rock Hotel, yeah. The Hard oh, Rock. the Hard Rock. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, very cool. Did you like it because of the because of the music, the the rock and roll music, or did you like it? Did it, did they have bunk beds? I think so. You think so? Yeah. Oh no, no, they didn't have bunk beds. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Yeah, oh. but I went to a really awesome event there. What was the event? It was my friend's birthday party, actually. That's a very, oh, okay. very good point. Because that's what makes the like hotels greater, what you do there. Um, I, it was like a fashion show party, so I got makeup. I got to run. I got to go on the runway. Of course, I got to have cake and stuff like well, that. Of course. I mean, come on. What's 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 a vacation without cake? I mean, it's not a vacation. Yeah. You gotta have cake. Mm -hmm. You got some awesome hard rock drumsticks. Yeah, I got awesome hard rock drumsticks. Wow, that's mm -hmm. great. They now, get to, they light up. Oh. The drumsticks light up. So so did your dad get you a big drum set to use them on? No. Oh, hey, Dad, oh, your dad that's... should really do that, I think. Your dad really, really needs a big, big lots of cymbals, um, lots of toms, yeah. two kick drums. A giant um... drum set? Yeah. So you used to have a drum set. I used to have a drum set. <laughs> but you need a big what one. What happened to it? You need a bigger these, one. these drumsticks, yeah. <laughs> and, and despite what your dad says, practicing in the nighttime around 1 o'clock in the morning is best. <laughs> that is the best. Good. Oh, that is and the a gong. Best time to practice. You need a big gong too. I almost forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's I want to see your cats. My cats? Where's oh, cats? I could go. Kelso. Where are you? I can. Where are you? I can try to find them. Hang on, just a second. Let me go grab them. <laughs> and he has some very big cats, by the way. Now, you, have, actually, you have a cat, right? I have three of them. You have three cats? Wow, what are their names? Gordon, Lou, and Larry. And how do they get their names? Lou, I don't know how they got them. Lou was named after a dog on a TV show. Lou was named after a dog on a TV show. Called The Soup. Okay. Called The Soup. And okay. Larry, Larry, we just stuck with the name he had. Gordon... Because he looks like Larry, basically. And Gordon, <laughs> we also stuck with the name he had. Because we like silly cute names. Because we like silly cute so Did you pick him up at the shelter, or where, where'd you get, where did you get them all? We got them at... Um, shelter. Shelter, yeah. Okay, yep. Except so they are for, very happy. Except for Lou. We found Lou under a pile of wood. Oh, so you saved Lou, and the rest you also saved from the shelters, which is nice. Mm -hmm. But they're very happy cats. Yeah. Are they big or are they kind of little? Because Robert's cats are very big. Really, Lou, really big. 
Lou is very fat, Gordon's very chubby, and Larry's just plain skinny. He's skinny. Just skinny? Is that because because the others eat all this food and he doesn't get to eat, or is it just he doesn't eat as much? It's just because <laughs> that. Well, Larry is trying to get chubby because he knows how to open the cat f- food thing. And one day, I caught him standing on his back legs, head in the um food jar, uh, chugging the food out of the food bowl. <laughs> <laughs> so I put uh, so him cat- in the living room, and he <laughs> went back. He faked it. Try, he faked it like he didn't know how to open it. So I walked away. He opened it. And <laughs> back again. I put him in the living room. And then he stayed. Oh, <laughs> did, he was trying to fool you that it's like, oh, no, don't worry. I can't get in until you left. And then he was going to dig into it again, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sneaky cat. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Robert's, I think he's no. got the cat. No, Does he no, have no, a, one where's random- the cat? The smaller one got away. <laughs> so let me get Kelso. Kelso, Kelso's the big one. He will not get away. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, Kelso's the one that usually when we're on the show, he tends to walk all around Robert when we're not looking. He'll, he'll go behind Robert and, and act like it's his show and, and just be the big fat cat on the show. So <laughs> what do you, you got to tell your dad to do the show from home so we can see your cats. What'd you think? I mean, that way we can we yeah. can see. Oh, there he is. <laughs> There's He's Kelso. A big cat. <laughs> Kelso's not very interested in the camera. Hi, Kelso. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a fat cat. <laughs> is it? It's a fat cat. <laughs> But he's a happy cat. He's a happy cat. Can you feed that thing? <laughs> he is. He is almost thirty pounds. He's a very big cat. Wow. Yes. He, wow. When he was a when he was a kitten, he was um, wild. So they found him actually near some railroad tracks, living outside on his own. And so he has been used to if he sees food, he will eat it. Because <laughs> when he was little, he didn't have enough food. So. Huh. Sorry, I'm doing technology stuff on the side. So talk amongst yourself for just a minute while okay. I type some stuff. So Harper, I, I, I love hard rock. I love hard rock uh, hotels as well. I've always, I've always liked it because of the music themes and what they, that they're different from all these other hotels, right? They just aren't, yeah. Yeah, they, they have a, a certain theme that they do and they stick to it and they do it really well. So that's good. Do you want to know my favorite hotel? What is it? It's called Inverlochy Castle. And it only has 16 rooms. And it has a chef who's really, really good. Um, he's Ooh. he's like one of the best in the world. He has a, a Michelin star where you can get three stars, dogs? but he only has one. Does he make hot dogs? He could make hot dogs. He can make almost anything, I think. But... Do you like the Harry Potter books? Oh, Urban. yeah. Okay. Well, this this hotel is set on basically where the Harry Potter books are based. So really close. You know, the, in, the, um, in the first movie when they're going to Hogwarts, they're going on the train yeah, and they yeah, have yeah. that giant train trestle, mm-hmm. right? Or the second, that's the second movie, actually. Yeah, um, yeah. That's really, really close by there. It's in Fort Williams, Scotland. And it's on a huge amount of land, and it has a great big mountain behind it, and it is spectacularly great. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. Mm-hmm. And nobody knows about it. And you should go there. Your dad should take you there, and you can have lunch. Is it all Because I did that. It is run by muggles. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but they know what they... But they're very good at and and I liked it so much. My family, we went on a cruise, and we went into um, one of the stops was Greenock, which is the port near Glasgow. So we rented a car, and I liked it so much. We drove three hours from the cruise ship up to have lunch, and then drove three hours back to make it on the on the ship and go to our next our next port. So, but it's very very beautiful. It's in Fort William, which is on the west coast of Scotland. And it's a great place. And if you have time, you can go up and see the Scottish Highlands, or you can go to Loch Ness, where um, I'm sure your dad would want to search for the Loch Ness monster. 
So it's a very cool place. Yeah, it is. It's really yeah. fun. <laughs> okay, so where's your your favorite place that you've ever gone on vacation? My favorite place is the Boston one that we were just talking about. It has lobsters. Oh, Boston has the lobsters? It's the Omni Parker House. Oh, the Parker House. Yeah, that's a famous, famous old hotel that's been there a long time. And they're still doing a great job, huh? They have bunk beds, which is even better right. for me. Your dad has told us about the bunk beds at the Parker House. He loved those. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah. This is true. But that was that was good. When that hotel opened, they didn't have bunk beds. And it's been there for maybe almost 100 years, something like that. It's been there a long time. So they changed their hotel around a little bit to make it more fun with kids, which I think is a really, really smart thing to do. Yeah, it's really smart. Maybe they keep making good decisions like that. They might be around for another 100 years. Who knows? So. Yeah. Very true. You know, we're going to have to tell your dad that if he doesn't go over and, and start, like, you know, uh, coming down to Florida more often, down south Florida more often, that we, we can ride the boat more often, then, you know, we're not going to talk to him as much as we usually do. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to tell me he has to come down to get on the boat more often. Just not the next month, but the month after that, too, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Well, we are going to have to talk about hospitality for a little bit more, too. Do you want to join we us on that conversation? Hos- we are talking about hospitality. We're talking about lobsters, <laughs> which is actually, you know, you're right. It is hospitality because without lobsters, you can't have lobster dinner, even though you don't eat lobsters. They're pretty good, but mm. they're also pretty neat. Now, have you, have you, has your dad brought you to Maine yet? Have you gone up to Maine, the state of Maine? No. No? <sighs> We got to talk how to many dad. how many states how many states have you been to? Do you know? I I don't know. You I don't travel that, a lot. You oh I've con- been to it in New York. That's cool. Did you like New York? Okay. Yeah. In Asheville. Great. That's in Tennessee. That's good. You've got Boca. Okay, so you've been Okay, Boca's is still in Florida, but that's good. Mm. And if you drove, did you if did you ever drive any? Did you drive to New York or Boston, or did no. you fly? I flew. Oh, see, if you drove, then you could have hit like South Carolina and yeah. Virginia and a whole bunch of other places. So you should make a list of all the states you've been to, I've and been then try to, I've and been then try to go to all of you. Wait, North you Carolina, want- yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's nice. My daughter is going to South Carolina next weekend. Cool. To, Charl- to Charleston, that's a really cool place too. They have some really fun stuff for kids there. They got a great aquarium. Yeah, you'd like that. Mm-hmm. Since you like lobsters and things like that, sea life. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, you should keep track. And you know where your dad should take you? Yellowstone National Park. You know, that's way out in Wyoming. A little bit's in Montana, a little bit's in Idaho. But it's very cool. They don't have lobsters, but they have moose, and they have elk, and they have wolves and bears, and they're, they all live there like it's not a zoo. They live out there in the wild. And coolest yet, they have geysers, which like, you know, are up like Old Faithful. You ever see that where the water shoots out of the ground? Yeah. Very, very cool stuff, and they've got canyons, and it's a great place for kids. My mom does not believe that moose exist. What? Oh, well, your your mom needs to go to Yellowstone National Park because when I was in college, I worked there, and I took a shortcut walking through, you know, like a little side path through some trees, and I wound up about mm, twenty feet away from a mama moose and her calf, her baby. They're big. And oh my gosh. Big. Uh, the mama moose, uh, you've you've obviously seen a horse. Maybe you even in rode a horse. If you kind of double the size of a horse, because they're you know a horse might be maybe five feet tall at the shoulder. These things are like eight or nine feet tall at their shoulder. They're wow. huge, huge, and they've got big antlers. Or the the males have big antlers, and uh, this mama moose didn't, fortunately. Um, and they are incredibly stupid. 
because they have really, really tiny brains. They're really big bodies, really tiny brains. <laughs> and this is this is the opportunity for your dad to make a joke. No, he's not going to take it. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> all right, Dad, do you want to make a joke or what? <laughs> hey, Harper, Debbie, Debbie. Debbie says hi. Debbie oh. says hi. She's in the office with you, and she says hi. Tell him he was talking for so long. Yep. She, ch she chatted over on Facebook because we're broadcasting on Facebook. You were talking so long, my dad fell asleep. Yeah, he does that a lot. Yeah, what? He does that a that's lot. Why, he that's why he doesn't know about he's not, blockchain. He's not entertained, yeah. He, he just goes to sleep. Nope. That's, <laughs> that's why he's been so slow in launching HarperCoin. I know. I know. Yeah. It's terrible. He needs to make your your blockchain Bitcoin Harper Coin Harper work. Coin. He needs to start. Harper Coin, not Bitcoin. Harper Coin. He needs to get that going for you. He needs to get all I'll the hotels. Millionaire. He needs to get all the computers of the hotels that work with Flip Two to start mining Harper Coin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And he needs to buy a lot of computers to mine it too. So yes, he has to. No, do no, it he should just use. Dad. He should just use his client computers. That's that's how it's done now. Oh, yeah. Can you do us a favor and remind your dad every day how he needs to use blockchain because he loves blockchain and he just needs to use it every day. My dad every says. Day. My dad says he hates blockchain. Actually, oh, that's not the truth. He's just pulling your leg. He he really deep down loves blockchain. He yes. does and. <laughs> he just told me to say nope. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> See now, your dad. You know your dad's just pulling your leg because you know yes, he I really know. does. He, he yeah, he's you know he's you know he's in the office every day and all he does is talk about blockchain. One in the middle. That's right. Were you struck by lightning? Yes. <laughs> Ask him how many times. How many times? Only three. Only. Wait. Only? Okay. Now wait. Were those direct? How many how times many... were you struck by lightning? Robert. Robert. Zero. I've seen lightning though. So, yeah. Me too. Only three is not the correct answer. <laughs> only three is not the correct <laughs> answer. <laughs> only three. That's the only ones I've been. Your dad thinks because it hit it, it hit around me, it's supposed to be more than three, but it was only three oh. that directly hit me. Well, I, I was, uh, we, when we lived, actually, boy, about 15 years ago, our house in Dallas got hit by lightning boy, while yeah. we were sleeping at night. It, it blew up my um, stereo system, which was not good, my, my music yeah. system. It, yeah. It was not, not, I mean, there wasn't fire or anything, but it, it electrically did not do very well with, <laughs> with our, our uh, yeah, most of our electronics in our house, but no, that was. But I don't consider that really me getting hit by lightning. Now, Lauren. Harper. Oh, this this is Edison. Hi, Edison. He was just having me around. This is Edison Wigglebutt Gray. <laughs> he has the same. Wait, you gave him your same middle name? That's great. That's great, Lauren. <laughs> Edison's in, in the morning time. He tends to be a little sleepy, as you can tell. He's like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." Dad's talking on the computer again. Hey, Edison, it's is, noon. Edison. Noon. Wake up, Edison. Get get no, to work. On he does. He get, does. get to work on the social media for hospitality digital marketing's clients. You need to manage those communities. Come on. <laughs> He's the poster child for uh, for HDM, but okay. Come here. All right. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Harper, what else you want to talk about? You have stolen the show, so it is all you. To what do you want to talk about now? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, think of, that's exactly what your dad says when he's on the show. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about some of your travels. When you traveled up to, to the Carolinas, what did you do? Did you go to the beach? Oh, you got a Wookiee. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, that's a oh. I'm sorry. I thought that was an Ed doll. I, I'm sorry. My mistake. <laughs> it was like something with the camera. I thought it was your dad. <laughs> your, your dad doesn't like Star Wars, does he? He doesn't like it at all. He loves he, he Star like Wars. <laughs> no, he does. He's just saying that for you guys. He doesn't really like. He tells us he he doesn't like Star Wars. 
Well, yeah. then how he come just, he, he has? Just... How come he has a poster of every single movie? Oh, he just does that for you guys. He doesn't. He yeah. just figures that you guys might like it. He doesn't. He doesn't like it himself. He's he he likes Star Trek a lot more. Uh, all yeah. right, <laughs> then let me ask him himself. Dad, oh, never mind. He's not here. He's never not even mind. there. See? Nope. You start talking about Star Wars, and he goes away because you know he's he's just not the big Star Wars person. He's actually he's, he's, he's more about the Star the Trek. He's actually probably well. He does that from time to time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does that from time to time. Yeah, he usually does it during the show too. But we don't we don't say anything at the time. He just turns off his camera and then comes. Back. <laughs> so do you guys do you like road trips or do you like flying? Uh, I like flying. I don't really like going in the car that much. No, why? It's because your brother. Yes. You guys get in the back seat and get along. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Usually you know what? You're annoying. Who normally sits? Does, when you drive in the car, does your dad normally drive or does your mom normally drive? Uh, my dad has to drive, or else he'll get car sick. Oh, really? That's good. Wait a minute. Now, good, why yeah, does Why good. does Chewbacca have a a Sith lightsaber though? Don't that know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I no, made that's a, this is a build a bear, and I made it for my dad because he loves ah, Star but you Wars. Give us, but you oh, give him a Sith lightsaber. Sure. Are you trying to say that your dad is a Sith? What? No. <laughs> I think he might. Maybe that's why. Yeah. I think he is likes your dad. A Sith your dad. Lord, wait, he, we're onto something. I think your dad likes Star Wars. He just likes the Sith. <laughs> He's on the side of the Empire, not the Rebellion. I think. Oh my I god. I will use this on you. I will use this <laughs> on you. <laughs> okay. Your dad so wait, is so Sith who normally? Uh -huh. Who normally sits behind your dad when he's when he's driving? You or your brother? My brother. Oh, okay. You have to tell your brother you to, keep your your from, to, to keep your dad from to getting car sick. No, no, but but tell your brother to keep your dad from being car sick and to make sure he doesn't fall asleep while driving to kick his seat all the time yeah. when he's driving. Your dad will really appreciate that. <laughs> He always says stop because my brother always does that. Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or, or another thing. Okay, if your dad says stop kicking, what your brother can do is kind of scoot down in the seat if he can and put his feet under the seat and kind of put his toes up and kind of kick from <laughs> underneath. You can try that too. <laughs> yep. yep. All right. And Here also my dad is. Here my dad is. Now I'm going to ask him. Dad, do you like Star Wars? He said yes. Say, are you oh, a Sith? Are you, you a him. Sith? Well, are you a Sith? Him, he said he doesn't like it. Are you a Sith? He says kind of. Kind of. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, see, in, in the world of, since my last name is Gray, technically I'm a Gray Jedi. So I'm in the middle. Yeah. Is your, oh. name, is your middle name Gray? No, his middle name's Wigglebutt. <laughs> no, that's Dennis. Just, just like his dog. Just like his dog. <laughs> he got, he earned that name when he was a puppy. <laughs> Why as, you did, butt <laughs> as you did yeah. too, probably. But he wagged his tail as butt wiggle. Huh? <laughs> you probably earned that middle name too. So I probably did too, but I gave it to the dog instead. Yes, Edison. Edison got wiggle, but as his middle name. <laughs> so your dad got a build a bear from you. That's a Chewbacca, but it has a Sith. Lightsaber, mm. yeah, that Just, can light yeah. up. That can light up. So that says one, something. I went to. Do you really? Have, yeah, because I have Darth Vader build a bear. Oh, it that sounds more like. I, I think <laughs> your, your dad got you that one, didn't he? See, we're we're getting to we're figuring this out now. <laughs> my dad bought are, are you me that. My dad You're, bought me that one because it was my birthday. Yep, uh, I we figured that. Yep, that would make a lot of sense. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we have to talk about something for people to understand that we're talking about hospitality. What else are we going to talk about travel wise, Harper? <laughs> All right. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Like, have you ever been out of the country? No, I actually want to go to Paris. Oh, Paris is great. Mm. My daughters love Paris. Because what do you, what do you want to do there? I see want everything. To see, I want to see the Eiffel Tower. 
that's very cool. You can go up in the Eiffel Tower because mm-hmm. um, it has some it has some elevators. But the best way to do it is to walk up. Thanks for letting me be on the show. My thirty minutes is up. Thanks for letting me be on my sh- uh, on the show. <laughs> Wait, were you our guest host today? Thank yes. you, Harper. <laughs> Bye, Matt. Bye, bye. It was uh, nice talking to you guys. Nice talking to you, bye, Harper. Harper. Thank you. <laughs> bye. Bye. Now, from now on, the conversation is going to go downhill because well, no, I mean, we, I mean, we now know we can go, come. Ed. We can go, Ed, your 30 minutes is up. Ed left? <laughs> <laughs> that was wow. it. <laughs> he can't top that. Well, yeah. I mean, not yet. Actually, you know, put, how honestly, he can't. Put yourself that was, that was, in his position. Would you want to go on and try to be as, as eloquent and poised that. and well organized and have such a you know good you know, engaging, solid, and friendly, and friendly? Yeah. We, look, look who we had with Harper. We had friendly, happy, pleasant. I mean, yeah. it's it. But you don't you you think that okay? So if 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 Ed is the Sith Lord and She's the, the 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 second one, the Darth, uh, the you know. She was the nicer one. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, well that's that's kind of how it how it works, I think. So, hmm. so we better get back to something talkative to uh, to to get back into hospitality. You gave a great list of stuff that I we haven't even said one thing about for the first half hour. Well, I I know, but I I thought Ed wanted to talk about blockchain, so now it's just going to be me. And I guess I will, I will prevail in the, uh, in the discussion. So I, I don't know, but uh, well, I guess he's. Everything not... you say about blockchain is right, and 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 if it disagrees with Ed, then it's not here to really disagree. So it's okay. Yeah. So there, there we go. So um, actually, one thing before we talk about that, I think um, we were talking about hospitality though, with what Harper liked to do, and I think she made some excellent points that. The keys to the trip. I mean, she said as a as a hotel feature, she loved bunk beds, right? Mm-hmm. But her favorite hotel was based on the experience of going to the birthday party, right? Which sounded like a fashion birthday party with the runway and the makeup and the car, all that sort of stuff. So it's the experience. I think there, you know, our research sample of one person, Harper, who speaks for her generation. I believe <laughs> is that hey you know you can have these great features and and guests will tell you I love bunk beds but it's the experience that they have at the hotel that makes the difference True. and that's True. how the hotels can do that is the real key to to become the favorite hotel and that that sort of thing so and I think just, also to a point too is the duration that you're staying at the location has an effect on how much you use the room for its features versus just the rooms in the area that you're visiting. I mean, yeah. again, to go back to Harper's conversation, she when she was talking about places she visited, there was two different kinds of conversations, where she stayed versus what she was doing when she was there. And right. the doing part was much more, to your point, like the party and so forth, was the real lead of interest. And the bunk beds didn't make the difference, or the right. room didn't make the difference. Sure. See? And yeah, well, and hey, I'll go back because Ed's not here to remind me to talk about Four Seasons. Way, way, way back when I worked for them, I was involved with um, developing the what's now the current Four Seasons in Dallas. And that wasn't a Four Seasons project. That was actually a Regent project. And Regent Hotels, time, you know, was kind of born in Hong Kong um, and really, yeah, great, great hotel group. Um, but the owner of the Las Colinas development, where there was a very successful um, Four Seasons, which is now the Mandalay, which is now, uh, or which was the Mandalay, which is now an Omni. Um, they decided, hey, they wanted to do this resort, and they hired Regent. So that was great. Regent had never done a resort. They built these really cool hotels for corporate hotels. So what did they do? Massive bathroom, giant, you know, granite everywhere, deep soaking tubs. Took up a lot of square footage in the uh, in the hotel room. And then what did they leave out to have the big bathroom was a closet. And all of a sudden you had a golf resort, which was designed for meetings and for social events. And it was a multi-use property. So people would be staying there for a longer length of stay than a typical corporate hotel because hopefully they would come in for you know, a conference and they would be able to dine and you'd have 
you know, fancy, you'd be wearing fancy stuff at your black tie dinner, and then you'd go have your, um, you know, sporting events or whatever, or your team building events, all these things which require a lot of clothes, things like, and they had no closets. And all of a sudden, people really disliked just having a little armoire where they, they had no place to store their clothes. So, you know, that was, they were following the pattern of this is how we build a Regent Hotel and just let's cookie cutter this thing. And this is it. People love our big bathrooms. And people did, except not in that, you know, not in that environment where you really needed a, you know, a better laid out room, which had, had closet space so you could put all your junk away because you were there for three or four days. So, right. But. Yeah, true. But anyway, um, yeah. So we can talk about um, we can talk about blockchain if we'd like. Except I'm not set up. I'm I'm not set up quite yet because I was so enraptured by by Harper's stuff. I didn't do my job of setting up the, like the links to uh, to go pop them into the uh, pop them in the feed. But that's okay. I will. Uh, we can go from a uh, there. So the. The basic debate now, Lauren, is your preconception that you are pro-blockchain, anti-blockchain, or it should be something something else? You are knowing that you are talking to the person that first identified it as block and chain, right? That's true. Yeah. So, <laughs> as opposed to block and tackle for football, or but, you know, or block or and fishing, block and chain or fishing, or, or like fishing that. tackle, or yeah. So, yeah, okay, yeah. No, so actually, I'll, I'll do I'm, the short. I'm for, I'm for the conceptualization. I'm against it in its prioritization. How's that? Oh, I think that's that's very very well put. So here's the challenge: the blockchain is a is a big buzzword. Everybody's running around saying, "Oh my gosh, it's going to change the world." And I, I personally feel the blockchain itself, maybe not. What the key underlying technology is actually a distributed ledger. Right, and I am very, very bullish on distributed ledgers. I am not necessarily on the blockchain. So, the the pr purpose of a distributed ledger and the way a distributed ledger works um, is that it eliminates the need for a central authority. Like if you're talking about currencies or something like that, or finances, a bank. People use banks because they're large, centralized authorities that are pretty good at keeping track of money, which is a very important thing if you are trusting your money with an organization. <laughs> you you want them to be big and centralized and have control over what's going on. Um, the blockchain does <clears throat> the opposite of it. And it was developed, um, I think the paper, original paper was written by a gentleman, <clears throat> or we believe it's a gentleman. It could certainly have been a woman. It could have been a group of people. Nobody knows who it really was exactly, named um, Satoshi Nakamoto. And they came up with an idea of a distributed authority that could do the same sort of thing that a bank or a central anything would do. And basically what you'd have is you'd have these computers working together that would basically let the community decide if things were good or bad. Or they basically, the community voted to say, Yes, we we agree. Lor that is Lauren's two hundred dollars, and it should be in his ledger, on his you know on his uh, his account. We agree because we have thousands and thousands of all these computers all over the world who have actually solved these very sophisticated financial questions that have nothing to do with this transaction, but they've they've proven through their work that. They have put in effort, and they speak be on behalf of the community because they're all running this this same algorithm, and that algorithm together provides trust and says, yes, that is Lauren's $200 because the way this is set up, nobody can go make that up, and Lauren can't say, no, no, that's not 200 that's $2 million. Give me the $2 million. You can't, you can't do that. Right, they have basically rules where if the community goes and says, "Wait, no, 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 he has too many zeros," they'll basically vote thumbs down. That's not an accurate transaction, and it doesn't go through. Right, so it's a very clever way of of doing that. Um, and I won't go into the technic, you know, the technicalities of how they mine for this, which is the whole proof of work um, effort that has to happen to make this community go. Um, so you kind of go, huh, well, that's kind of interesting. I can now do things with a bank. And, hey, I can be anonymous, and I can go trade 
goods or services or currencies or whatever it may be with other people and I can just do it on my own and there's no bank there in the middle and this is great. And conceptually, that's that's maybe a good thing, except it has a couple a couple downfalls. One is you are trusting this community and are you really sure that this community and its algorithms are fairly set up where they can't swing the vote one way or the other in their favor, which is the whole reason to get rid of the central authority because the central authority could behave in its interest instead of the interest of the community that it's working with, right? So um, you may not know exactly how this stuff works underneath. Um, so that's a little bit of a risk, but the but the algorithms in the blockchain should you know should allow you to allow you to do that. So that's the basic on how the blockchain for this distributed ledger kind of works, right? In a very very high high level, the challenge with it isn't necessarily that technology that makes everything. Oh, the and the one thing is it's it becomes immutable. So once these transactions happen, they are chiseled in stone into one of these blocks it's a digital block instead and it can't be changed and the way it does that is that that block is reproduced on thousands of computers right so to to change it you don't just change it in one spot like an essential computer you go in and hack a bank you might be able to change so, Lauren's account from 200 to 2 million and that's fine you only have to go to one spot here you might have to go to thousands of spots and change all of their records all at the same time which is really so, hard so you can't you can't like when you accidentally send an all send run around the world and destroy everybody's computers before they check their email you can't do that well <laughs> not not only that but it's worse it's even harder than that because those blocks also have pointers to like the previous block and the next block so when you make the change if you can't do them all at the same time and mind you you don't even know where these computers are to start off with, which makes it really hard um, because everything is encrypted. Not only do you have to do that, but you have to change all the transactions like before that block that you uh, messed with, and that makes it incredibly hard as well. So you can't just go find those, let's say, 2,000 computers and change them all. Even if you are able to do that, you would have to change all the blocks before them and you just can't do that, right? So it's really a very, very clever way to make sure that people can't mess with the data, which is fantastic. But there is a big, big problem with it. Number one is this proof of work takes a lot of time and a lot of energy, um, and it's not very fast. So right now, these blockchain platforms, are they can do maybe 7, 11 transactions a second, which is maybe fast enough to do certain things but when you look at it at something like a saber or an amadeus um, amadeus in the lab says that they can produce 250,000 transactions a second so if you're doing something like trying to sell a hotel room across yeah thousands of travel agencies or something like that even something as simple as that a corporate rate across thousands of travel agencies you want when that's sold to happen and it's done and everybody knows instantaneously you can't wait to do oh let's just wait we're we're in a queue here and we've got to wait a couple minutes or something like that for that to happen that does not work you get out of seat you get out of sync with uh oh the hotel's inventory is different from the hotel brand central reservation system it's different from the online travel agency it's different from the gds and everything falls apart that's a that's a bad bad situation um, the other problem with it is that the blockchain is very secure but everything that attaches into it may or may not be and you have these weak points that are you know the weakest link in the chain is where maybe a wallet where this this stuff would you know maybe Lauren's money or his coin or you hear the term Bitcoin that is a cryptocurrency that's stored on the blockchain but for the uh, for that or the Harper coin we talked about earlier if um, Harper came up with her own coin and wound up promoting it and she could have people buy it and that would be fine and it could wind up being used for whatever purposes they wanted to do that's great but if Harper wanted to go maybe buy a Build-A-Bear, um, the Build-A-Bear store may not accept Harper coin. 
Um, yet, yet, not yet. Of course, they will in the future when it is the predominant cryptocurrency across the world. The but, but right now, right now, you can't really use your Harper coin anywhere. So you put it in a wallet, and that wallet you could then use to change it to something else, right? It's an, the wallet isn't necessarily on the blockchain with everything embedded in with all these transactions you're keeping track of. And that's the problem, and those are what get hacked. And that's where all the uh, and that's where all the problem is. So the wallet may not be as secure and may not even use the blockchain or distributed ledger technology. So so that's the background on it. And um, and so my feeling on it is I love this distributed ledger technology. I don't like Bitcoin because of this whole proof of work thing, but um, they have a wide variety of of others. Um, which might be like Hypergraph and and a variety of other platforms that um, are very very good. They are they're much faster. They are just as secure because they might use um, um, oh oh and I forgot it. Oh no, a DAG, which is a um, oh it's a directional acyclic graph. That's it. Sorry, I almost forgot. A directional acyclic graph which does kind of what the blockchain does. It's a, it's a thing where you start and each continuing transaction is associated to it. So it's moving one direction and it doesn't cycle back. You just go straight through and each of those transactions is built on the one in front. So it makes it very, very difficult to hack. So I think you can have some really, really interesting things from a technology basis. So this is a very interesting technology. And here's where I hope We'd had the we'd have the discussion in the back and forth with Ed is what's the use of that technology, and so that's I think where we are now with the uh, with the blockchain and these um, these distributed ledgers are okay. We have this new technology. It seems like it has some cool attributes of maybe eliminating some of these central authorities and not being able to be hacked. So how could you use that? For example, in the hospitality industry, efficiently, and Ed has come out to speak with Ed that this is just hype and it's garbage and it doesn't work because you can't really use this stuff very effectively right now for for hotel transactions because there are groups who are coming out and they're raising millions of dollars just like Harper might want to raise money for Harper Coin and have people buy Harper coin, um, there's not a lot behind it. And I would say some of these groups that are working in the hotel and in, in the travel industry have about as much behind them as Harper does with her Harper coin, which is just a name at this point. Um, <laughs> but they've raised tens of millions of dollars from investors who are like, yes, let's go, because all they did was they wrote a white paper and had an idea. There's not a business model. There's not a proof of concept. There aren't users. There's not even, there aren't even use cases for these, you know, for these, uh, some of these, you know, blockchain oriented, um, cryptocurrencies. And oh, you'll hear about Ethereum. And Ethereum is also another distributed ledger, um, often called a blockchain, but it's technically different. It's a different form of blockchain. Um, that's a little bit more expanded and it winds up having, um, really the, the capability to do a little bit more in the smart contracting area. So um, it's it's a little bit more powerful than uh, than the pure blockchain. So and it, it has some additional functionality and capabilities that are built into this um, this distributed ledger, which um, you know theoretically let you do smart contracts better. So you can say, hey, Lauren has a uh, has a contract with me to do something, and I need to give him two hundred dollars every week for whatever when he does something. That's great. I can go do that. I can transact that through Ethereum. And theoretically, not only can it keep track of the transaction financially, but it can keep track of was that work that Lauren said he did really done, right? And that's, it was. that's actually... I'm telling you right now, I didn't do it. I didn't well, do it. and that's what I we're didn't. doing now, right? We're using traditional banking and fiat currencies, and Lauren is ripping me off saying that he's doing all this work every, you know, every week, and he gets his $200 and I don't really know. All I can do is trust Lauren. But first, again, since it's only two hundred bucks, you get what you pay for. I'm just saying, well, and, you know. And actually, Lauren, you made the absolutely critical, 
critical point with the blockchain. I didn't even have to bait you into it. So even though my transaction to Lauren can't be can't be hacked, can't be copied, is perfect, right? That transaction, my giving Lauren $200, worked, right? And nobody can hack it, and it's perfect. The problem is, is A, am I sure that I actually sent it to Lauren? A, and B, did Lauren really do that work? <laughs> and that sort of, and did he abide by the contract, right? Those are all really really important questions, which are much more important than how did my money get from my account, wherever that may be, to Lauren's account, right? That's kind of the easy way because now I could write him a check in ink and send him that piece of paper through the mail, or I could use Venmo and do You're it that person on my phone. I put him at the grocery store that I'm in a rush. I got one item, but you just bought a pile of stuff and you got to whip out the checkbook. That's oh, no, you. no. You've got to rip out Shepcock, and worse than that, all of your coupons. Oh, my God. Because oh, you're that, that person. Because okay. that individual is eligible for a bunch of discounts. They got the – who knows what made them eligible to get all those coupons, but they have taken the time and effort to collect all of them, and they want to benefit from the value of their work of – Clipping them, copying them, whatever they did, hacking someone's computer. I don't know how they got their coupons, but they got all that stuff and they want that value because they deserve it, right? They are eligible for that. So why shouldn't it be given to them, right? Well, I would argue that distributed ledgers could help with that and make that a very, very seamless transaction. So. You would argue that. You. All right. What other fun things do we have? Other since Ed's not even so Ed decided that this was not an Ed show day, and and that Ed decided that we while well, you brought blockchain to the table, one of his well Ed brought Ed topic. raised the topic, and we said, oh, well, we'll make it the story of the story of the week sort of thing and talk about, it. and then uh, he doesn't. Show up. I would think he would not. Ed is not able to. He's afraid of you. Defend his position. Well, yes, of course. That uh, yeah, you would that you would trounce him in this topic. You would. Oh, I would. would make I absolutely would. <laughs> yeah, I, I think no. you actually have. I think. I think. I think it's a drop mic moment when it well, comes to. Uh, and uh, and topic. what we can save for next time, or whenever we do bring up this topic, because the conversation I wanted to have was how it can work, the things that have to happen to make it work, why a variety of forces. Keep, will keep that from happening, right? Um, but the end state is if it does work, it can be highly, highly disruptive. I mean, it, you know, at, at the same level as the internet as a technology for the internet connecting people back and forth and being able to exchange information and access information. Um, I think the blockchain can do similar sorts of things with one, validating identity to make sure that, hey, that's your ident that's Lauren's identity and nobody can, can spoof the system to, to pretend to be Lauren or me, right? Sort of thing that, that that can be, you know, hopefully nailed down and distributed ledgers could help do that. You know, eliminate that hacking and, um, you know, the ability to, to spoof someone's, uh, you know, someone's identity or to steal their identity. Um, number well, two, well, if you can do that, then you can also, if you can, if you can really define those identities and make sure that those are the people you're working with, then all of a sudden you have the basis for some smart contracting to go, great. Well, now we have agreements and here are some, some contracts which are deployed within this digital ecosystem to make sure that that work is being done. That yes, the rate that you posted that was supposed to be sold only in combination with an airline ticket because it's a 25% discount or whatever that you're trying to dump rooms through a package isn't going out to some third-party travel agent or God knows where who's separating that and just selling it on the street for 10% off, 20% off, and all of a sudden doing something where you know it's undermining your retail pricing structure and it's, it's basically breaking a rule of how that 
that inventory or or rate should have been sold. Um, yeah, I think the smart contract could go could go do that very very effectively. And then third, you could even extend this down to what discounts are people eligible for, right? Because hey, you know, Lauren. Um, well, we won't use Lauren. We'll use me. I'm. I'm old enough to be a member of AARP. I'm not, which is the Association of Retired People. Or I could be a member of the American Automobile Association. Lots of, you know, tens of millions of people. Why are you picking on members. my memberships? Why, why are you picking on my memberships? Exactly. I mean... But, but when, you go, when you go and search for a rate, you live in Florida. I live in Texas. Maybe there's a certain rate that's, like for Disney, you get certain benefits of, at Disney parks, right? The Florida resident type thing. They might have a AAA. Ed, Ed you know? probably gets a cup of coffee and a custom scooter. Because for all the times that he goes to Disney, they're probably exactly. like Norm out of Cheers. It's Ed! And then, you know, next thing you know, the gates open, the balloons pop up, Mickey shows up, Darth Vader yeah. shows up. <laughs> Darth Vader shows up, kills Mickey, and that's a private thing that they do just for that's a, that's just that. a that's a personal yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he has to but, you know, he has to put the cowl on the hood and go talk business for a little while. You know, yeah. <laughs> but but actually, but all the things you're eligible for a bunch of stuff that you don't really know. And when you go and search for a hotel, what do you have? You've got a little field that goes in, or some check boxes that might go. Um, you know, put in the special code, the hidden code, right? And it's a little bit of a scam because people will go, oh, use this code to go get 10% off or whatever. Well, there are probably some ways if your identity can be validated. Yeah, that's great. You're eligible for this stuff because you're a member of the Frequent Traveler Program. You, you, you bring, bring up a really good point up in the other articles, though. I mean, you, you bring right. about the expensive booking programs and so forth was another article you've thrown up. Oh, yeah. there, there is... There is this thing, there's this thing that I think from a CRM perspective that we haven't even begun to tackle yet. I mean, not to just jump from blockchain, but to say, yeah. and that oh, no, is but it, all, they, it actually all ties, it shouldn't be about the blockchain. That's just the technology. That's like, right. are we using HTTP or are we using FTP to send this information back and forth, right? How should we transfer this file, right? So, yeah, that that shouldn't really matter to the user. Right. It should be, right. hey, it's secure, it went, it's intact, it's the real file, that's it. The data is correct. How it happened, who, I mean, people don't understand exactly how their cell phone works. And if they're on, you know, they know 4G is faster than 3G, they don't know why. And 5G is going to be really cool. But again, it doesn't matter if you're CDMA or yeah, whatever on your on your cell phone, what technology it's using, it just works, right? So, blockchain should be the same way. Anyway, go ahead with your your CRM stuff. No, so say is that from a membership point of view, the real ultimate membership relationship experience, membership being that you are being I identified in a different relationship value than anybody that isn't. It's it's just a non off switch mentality. Of, right. Okay, I've decided to wanting to pursue a unique relationship with the business entity. And because of that, I'm wanting the business entity to always let me know what's to my benefit, period. Right. Because that's really what I'm asking. Is that's all say, they care because That's of, all the person really cares about. <laughs> right. What, what, yeah. what, am I getting my stuff? Am I paying yeah. more than I should? I mean, all of a sudden. Or am I getting opportunities that I should, that, that are, are opportunities going by that I should know about? Or should I be getting advantage to something because of my unique relationship with this business entity? You know, my frequency of staying, which is the carrot on the stick mentality, or the value of my stay, or the affiliations of my stay, you know, that I can influence other people. I think, and we talked about micro-influencers and so forth as a usable tool marketing. There's also the awareness that the, the, the old marketing, the old school marketing of word of mouth and who you know and who are the authorities on topics like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gadget geek. So my friends know that if they're going to buy a gadget, they're going to they're going to want to ask me questions whether I know about it, buy, have already bought one or whatever, because they will value my opinion about the gadget more than somebody that never bought a gadget. And the same right. should exist with the business relationship is if I'm one of those people that love going to a certain destination like Ed does to Disney World, Disney World should eat up any opportunity to feature Ed and make Ed have a great experience because Ed will continue to share that value proposition to everybody he talks to because he loves how they how he's being treated. So right. that real loyalty membership relationship 
has yet to be grown up where I'm not missing anything. Now, there is some steps that have happened in technology recently that we're getting closer to. Like when Google had their, their, their conference just recently, mm-hmm. the, the fact that you can, with Google Wallet, have a method of payment now that is within the, their Gmail environment and so forth where you can uh, use Wallet to trade transactions, which right. is very Amazon-esque in the sense that if you're in a funnel for something, now it's opened up to developers that the Google Wallet can be the facilitator of the exchange seamlessly, where it's just it's an acquisition. You know, Amazon's biggest claim to fame was the one-click purchase with the, as a prior, as a Prime member. You know, click done. Every I don't have to fill nothing in. I don't. I mean, I can go back and change shit if I want to and cancel it. But if all I want to do is buy something, I just click it. Or better yet, I'll put a little gadget on, talk to it, and it'll just put it yeah. on an order queue and send it to me when I have enough stuff to order. That's right. kind of where this whole Google thing is going, because uh, I think that with their new wallet integration and the ability to make reservations at a hotel, which is specific to the presentation that they gave, where it's like, look, I want to go stay at a hotel. You can literally ask your Google Assistant now to book your room at a hotel. And with the wallet integration that they just really put into the developer's hands now, you can have that. OK, uh, you, I know when you say I want to stay at the Marquee in New York, it will go. It will do all the things I need to do in the sense of finding the dates based on my stay of what I've already chosen in my Gmail. And mm-hmm. whatever opportunities exist with my membership relationship or AARP relationship or whatever. And it will go over and book my room and make the payment. Right. That, yeah. that makes it very simple. Friction. Frictionless. That's, that's the whole, that is the whole point. How do you make this really easy? Because in that case, what did you have to do before? I mean... Go way back. You talked about, oh, my gosh, the person who goes and writes the check out at the grocery counter. I mean, that's kind of how you had it. Either you had to carry around a bunch of cash, which was maybe risky because you could have someone take try to take that from you <laughs> sort of thing. Um, or, you know, all of a sudden you didn't have to do that because that was inconvenient. Did you have enough cash with you right then to go do the things you needed to do during your day? So then all of a sudden it shifted to things like, checks and it's like hey here's just a piece of paper i'm giving and before they had really the banks doing it it was basically just like it was a literal piece of paper saying i owe you five bucks and it's like okay good i'll put it in the wall i'll put it in the till that's just like a five dollar bill and when you're back we'll you know when you have the money we'll we'll do that well yeah you got the banking system working you know working through that the federal reserve now trading all this money back and forth between merchant accounts and individual accounts and all these sorts of things and yeah, then you got credit cards um, where you could do Which hey, you can paper. buy stuff that you don't even you don't even have the money for. <laughs> it's somebody right. you're right. using somebody else's money and they are charging you for the privilege of doing that. Um, to debit cards now where you can take the stuff straight out of your account and you don't necessarily do that. To a digital, you know, a digital wallet on a phone like a like a Google Pay or an Apple Pay or whatever, which again aren't they are very sophisticated technologies, right? They work really well, and they're really secure, mostly, again, because of this, A, it knows your identity. It's Lauren's iPhone. He knew the password or had the thumbprint or the facial scan or whatever that authorized him to use that device, and that mm-hmm. device has some encryption which keeps track of, hey, yeah, I know where his banking checking account, I know where Lauren keeps his money. <laughs> sort of thing that's good and instead of using his american express number or visa card or mastercard or whatever that number never gets sent down to the merchant it winds up being a google or an apple mastercard which is a a single use um you know virtual card number that goes down so they can transact it through the the mastercard network and it can get settled and that sort of thing and that's fine so all of a sudden your credit card number doesn't have to get past the merchant, which was a, a point of risk in a place where people could get right. hacked and that sort of thing, and they could get lost. And you go, wow, that's fantastic. And that's easy. all I need is my phone, and I get it near the little thing, and it goes because of NFC winds up being able to go transact this thing, which is near-field communications technology, another technology that's in people's phones that they don't really care about or consider or know how it works. Same as a GPS that's in it. They don't know how that works, but it just, it knows where your location is. So you can do some really, really cool, you know, really cool stuff. Um, it's the same thing. That. So, 
so my point is now with Google Pay and Android or Apple Pay, well, do they really need that MasterCard, or can they just go, "Hey, merchant, where's your money kept? We don't care where. Just point us to that spot." And you know Ooh. what, Lauren, we know where his money is. We'll point it to that spot. And again, we don't care. Is that a cryptocurrency? Is that in Brazilian reals? Is that in euros? Is it pounds? I don't care. It, it could be in Harper coin. And that's fine. Because mm -hmm. as long as they know, here's the value of the Harper coin. We know where it is. That's a denomination. Here's a transaction. And then again, the question is, are Google or Apple going to then, because they've replaced the banking system, they've replaced the credit card network, <laughs> they've replaced everything, do they continue to charge the same fee and and keep that all as profit by vertically integrating all those 14 steps that have to take place when you when you do one of these transactions? Or do they lower the cost, right, to make Ooh. it go away because now it's more efficient and it's on their platforms and... I don't know. What is their business model? With Apple, it's to sell you hardware and to keep all of your information private. For Google, it's like, we'll handle all your, your information and we'll keep it secure, but we want to know everything you're doing so we can advertise to you, right? That's a right. different model. Both of those could be equally valid and lower costs and be more effective. Or they could be abused and do really bad things when these central groups get too much authority, which is back to the blockchain going, the idealists go, blow that all away. You don't need any central thing. You can just go do it yourself. But the fallacy is, wait a second, all those moving parts, how do I know all that stuff replacing the bank and the credit card thing and that merchant and who's making sure all this stuff is right because when something goes wrong in the blockchain, there's no central authority. You can't go call customer service right. and complain and say, hey, right. somebody ripped me off, fix this. It's like, sorry. You know, yeah. whatever happens. System says that, yes. No, but it, it kind of goes that you know, where you used to, uh, when you traveled abroad, you always had to, if you were smart enough or had enough lead time, buy your currency that you needed from your bank and you had to pay for that privilege of doing it. Uh, and then, of course, if you were ever in country and you needed more cash cash, uh, you had to go and you had to pay for the convenience of, of the uh, conversion of your funding to whatever the currency was of the country. And I got to say, honestly, that most of my travels, I, I have had cash, you know, whether I was in Canada or China, Australia, uh, EU, uh, that I had never ended up using it really. And my fastest and one I love the most is my watch because with the near field communication stuff now, every place I go, I'm almost not frustrated, but disappointed if it's like, you know, oh, you guys don't have, you know, uh, uh, near field communication uh, terminals. You, know, you have to put, take the card right. out and, you know, put it in. So you're still not complete. But just like with boarding passes with planes, when they first were transitioning from paper to electric, you know, the, you know, the, the, the phone usage and so forth, for the longest time, as a security feature, I would always still print out my boarding pass and carry it with me so that yep. if my phone didn't scan or if it Absolutely. died or whatever it was, I'd still have a piece of paper. I stopped that years ago. Now it's like I'm – it's my phone. It's my watch. It's my iPad. I mean, I got, I got backups to backups. My phone decided to reboot when I was trying to use it as a boarding pass. My phone – I mean, my watch does it. You know, and if both of those died, I can pull up my iPad and pull up my, you know, app and there's there's the QR code there, you know. And if that didn't work, then, OK, then I got a problem. <laughs> but it, it, yeah. it's, it's funny that as we go forward like this, I mean, I walk around and it's not so much needing cash as it is just what's the method of payment at this point. Um, and, and hotels, unfortunately, are still from an internal operation point of view way behind because they're getting bled to death with card not present charge charges absolutely persistently and and card persistently. not present the card not present is a big thing from a risk which the which the credit card companies go whoa 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 you didn't see the card hang on right. you're going to pay more so, because we're the ones who stand by that transaction and cover it off right, right? hey we don't want to do that check-in when we had star from before check-in right. you know yeah. that was one of the things that, that was like oh so God. appealing on the content was like this is a one-stop shop transaction that once this transaction has been validated there is no accessory charges to its validation after that point 
Right. Well, and and SAR had the only PCI compliant advanced deposit processing platform for both Oracle and Agilisys, which is astounding. Because you go, wait a second. The number hotels want to get paid in advance. They love advanced deposits, right? Those that doesn't get better than a prepayment for the hotel. Um, that eliminates a lot of risk, and they can't do it securely. It's not PCI compliant. They've got people sending faxes and emails with credit card numbers or bank account numbers and routing number. It's like. Oh my God! You've got to stop that. That's a that's a horrible situation. But nobody has in this massive industry, where both of those groups have you know tens of thousands of major properties and major brands on their platform, um, and it never got built. And it's not because those organizations are stupid or unable to code. It's all the other stuff, the complexity of that ecosystem that they're trying to they're trying to work in that uh, that makes it very very difficult. So, yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a problem. So, um, but again, there are technologies that can make a, that can make these things work, you know, certainly more, more smoothly. So, mm -hmm. um, and I'm almost at the point where I can post the, uh, post all the links to our, to our articles, Lauren. So, <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I don't want to miss a couple of them, like the rut rows. I mean, do you put you, Every week, and it, it, it's a, it's a crime to say that we don't get to them. We do have them on the links of the of the recast for uh, the post on the website uh, hospitaldigitalmarketing.com, and always the show number is the indicator of the post. So this will be hospitaldigitalmarketing.com forward slash one four eight, which is which for show one forty eight. Um, but uh, and the links are in there, and and, and uh, we've talked about. It. I've, I've, I know I've been uh, threatening it, but to take all the links that you have, take the time to put together. And every month, we send them back out to our, our subscribers is to, and here's all the topics, whether they were discussed in the show or not, but here are the relevant topics for this past month. So if you want to do a kind of a recap to what the month was like, it's a great, great source. I mean, we should push it out there from just the sheer value of its, of its uh, relevancy, because uh, you do. You, you break it down in wonderful, great categories for it. Uh, you know, the, the main topic this week is you pulled out for Ed, who decided not to stay with us today, was blockchain. Chicken. You uh, know, you can't, you can't, yeah. tr the, the theme of this program should be, you can't really trust a Sith. I think that That's is, right. that is the takeaway. Yeah. That is the takeaway for today. <laughs> that you cannot trust a Sith. That, you know, they just, they don't show up for the whole show. Um, right. But we have, you bring it into top story, you bring it into brands, intermediaries, marketing, tech, and the rut row. <laughs> That's right, and I, it's just a little, a little, a little bit of a, an homage to Scooby Doo, right? So that's the <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Um, there is a couple of ones that I don't want to miss opportunity to, to just bounce around a little bit. You on the intermediaries, uh, you had a couple of Airbnb logo uh, uh, content oh, yeah. in there, uh, which I thought were really neat because we have been bouncing on Airbnb a little bit. Um, I, it's a relevant topic for me because I have to you. Uh, address some airbnb things with clients in the coming weeks and ah. i know and, and i'm surprised and this is a genuine surprise that a lot of people don't even know about AirDNA. right uh which is in it's kind of like a, a weird platform for those who don't know about it it basically keeps track of everything related to airbnb um how they get their information is still in my mind a bit of a they, mystery they scrape it or get basically data feeds from airbnb and that's one of the remarkable things i, I think i commented last week airbnb didn't shut that down they want this right. information shared so they can they can have an ecosystem where their hosts are making more intelligent informed decisions and it isn't just Airbnb saying, here's what you should do and here's what your price should be and be this central organization. They, Their culture is how do you develop this community, right, that can go do these wonderful, amazing, you know, wonderful, amazing things. Um, and that's really, really smart. I mean, look at Apple. Apple doesn't develop all of its apps. It has its app store. And yes, it goes and vets all, in their case, I have some real problems with Apple's walled garden in terms of their, you know, central authority over exactly what's happening. And if things might not be so good for Apple's business model, then they don't let it go out on the platform, which it really should 
be able to just go, right? But but that's Apple's business model. They're selling hardware. Understood. Airbnb, though, is different. You know, how can they help people have really great, authentic travel experiences, save money, help the hosts? I mean, they have... They have multiple constituencies. They're they're having the hosts make money and meet interesting people, and you know have the hosts help people have gr- better experiences in their cities, and the travelers want to have better experiences and to maybe save some money and to to do something cool and different that they didn't know about. So, yeah, it's and, it is disruptive. And also, too, I mean, in hoteliers. Um, I think the, the, the not the admonishment, but the recommendations that I give most is uh, if you see Airbnb as a threat, a legitimate threat, and not just a perceived threat, a, a hypothetical threat, but you know you're losing inventory opportunities with them because they invade during peak event times. They dilute your rate-based capabilities because of whatever Absolutely. they make as an issue. Whatever it is, then you need to know them well, you know, you know, to know your own enemy kind of thing. Uh, if you see them that way, and the what they're not understanding is that there's a massive community associated with Airbnb to support their their hosts, to support the communities that the hosts are in. There's there's groups and meetups and whole chapters of things of people dialoguing as to how, doing this whole Airbnb thing in the community that they're associated with, yep. and and it's not involved, Airbnb. It's not Airbnb funding all of that. Sometimes they'll give it a little boost sort of thing, but they they want the community to support organically what they are doing, right? And not right. just for they, – they want to be the platform, right? That's the whole thing that they'll say. They are the platform. They are not anything else. They're just in the middle facilitating these things, and that keeps them very, very – clean from a business model perspective of not suddenly becoming liable for somebody's smoke detector didn't work and you know whatever and somebody you know died because of the apartment fire or something like that that was caused by a by a guest i mean those are horrible scenarios that the airbnb guys are smart enough to realize hey, you know what, it isn't just having the legal terms of service and, you know, 45 pages of, you know, three-point type. <laughs> you know, they're not saying, here's why right. they aren't liable. It's like, how can the community come in and figure out that, hey, you should go make sure your smoke detector works anyway because you could burn down the place yourself. So, you know, right. let's make sure that this thing goes. Or, yeah, cleaning up after people is a pain. Um, that's horrible. Well, maybe here's a service that'll do it for you. Right? Right. There's Which some is- communities that support Airbnb. The I need somebody that's in market that can fix light, uh, electro, uh, light bulbs and so forth. Okay, well, which, this is which, who else? Yeah, which you may be able to need for your own place anyway. Hey, I need some stuff spruced up. I, this place looks right. like a dump. I can get a better, higher um, rate if I spruce some things up, add a few things, and this is fan- and hey, you know what? I'll have a nicer place anyway that I live in. That's great. So, do they take Harper Coin? Do you think they will? I mean, everybody will. will. Everybody so will. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah um, <laughs> so, um, so with, the, with the Airbnb stuff, though, I think one of the uh, things was um, it was actually Ellis Conley on LinkedIn had a um, thing about really looking at hotel channel costs, which I think we we should discuss. I mean, that could. Dis- that deserves a full show almost on itself, as does, uh, does blockchain. But um, yeah, some really you know interesting interesting things that you have to look at in terms of Airbnb is lowering the channel costs for these for the hosts. Now yes. the interesting thing is yes, they're they're only charging the hosts three percent, but because they control this ecosystem, um, they are av- able to charge the guest. 12%, right? And the guests don't mind paying it because guess what? They're providing a to- here's the total price of everything. It's the taxes, it's the cleaning fees, it's the uh, everything's in, you can see the total price right off the bat and what do you know? You think the hotels could maybe take a little hint from that as opposed to charging resort fees, you know, sorting things by whatever, the OTAs right. hiding their, yes, here are the, the tax recovery and service fees kind of buried in. You go, wait a second, that looks like 25% instead of, 
you know, 15% tax. And what is that, right? The lack of transparency right. um, is, I mean, when you start looking at what, how, what Airbnb is doing, it's training people to look for transparency and clarity and to know here's exactly what I'm getting, here's what I'm paying for, no hidden anything. Um, really important for the hotel industry to, to be doing that. I mean, it, it, they have to, or they're going to lose out and they're going to get disruptive because they aren't being transparent with their customers. It goes back to the, you know, do you stop at every stop sign uh, or do you stop at every stop sign because you think there might be a police officer around? Um, <laughs> It's kind of the same thing with the, the hotels that they've been getting away with it. And, and it's like, hey, you know, let's slap this fee on. Okay, they didn't like it, but they paid it because at the end of the day, they have to stay with us. Now there's another entity in market that is giving alternatives to that methodology of, okay, because we got away with it, that it was okay to, it's not okay to say your rate's 150 bucks. Oh, by the way, there's a $35 facility fee per day. Uh, right. And, um, We'll, we'll be charging tax on that, too. The room tax? Know. Well, no, that's because the local jurisdictions looked at it and said, well, that's bullshit. That's just the room rate, right? Because it's a right. mandatory fee associated with that stay, and that is what a room occupancy tax is. So, I mean, let's be clear about it. Resort fees were started purely to undermine the competitive shopping process. That was yeah. it, right? So you could go post a lower rate and go, hey, we're $85 a night when, yes, you were hiding an additional, at the time, $15 or whatever. Everybody else is saying they're a they're $100 hotel. You look like you're 15 And then, yes, you're going to charge them for use of the health club, the newspaper, the what, you know, whatever, whatever it may be, right? Um, right. Yeah, access to internet, which, the, you know, was being demanded for free anything. All those costs of doing business of the service portfolio um, being provided by the hotel all of a sudden got yeah got sort of isolated as a charge but didn't change the operation of the hotels or anything or the utilization of those travelers of those services it's just fundamentally dishonest and it's now billions of dollars to the to the hotel industry right. Um, and it is worse than bag fees I mean I hate bag fees everybody hates bag fees on airlines but you can make the legitimate case hey you aren't checking a bag that's weight weight is important on this thing that's right. flying up there it applies to fuel there's you know people on the ground bringing it on bringing it off all that stuff if we don't have the bags why should you pay for that fee and so i understand that argument i still think it's dishonest from the airlines because they know people who travel have luggage because they need to have different clo clothes and what they're wearing. But what's the what's going to happen with the airline industry? Uh, my prediction, it'll come back to bite them because you'll be able to have Amazon or FedEx or whoever send your stuff to the hotel, right? Why mm. not? If they can, again, identify who's Lauren, where is he going to stay? This is the real trip. Let's get the stuff there on time reliably and it's there Reliable. waiting for him when he got there gets there that's fantastic now all of a sudden you've you've eliminated having to schlep all that stuff through the airport you've made Ooh. it easier and how do the hotels react to it? do they charge a fee well we're now going to charge you 15 dollars to take the bag up to your because there's labor involved with it and oh do you want it unpacked that's going to be such that's going to be very very interesting because Five-star luxury hotels will provide unpacking services for you. Some of them, you're staying in a suite, they'll do it for free. I mean, yeah. some of them will charge you through the nose. It just depends on their business model, right? Well, but, let me face it. The reason why everybody crowds to get on a plane is not because they're worried about getting a seat. Right. It's worried about whether they have a space for their bag. I mean, Absolutely. nobody because, needs to get on a plane early. You know, right. the plane's only going to leave when the last passenger gets on board. It's the fact that I want a place to put my bag up and get settled in before everybody else runs out of bag space and they got to go check it in and go through the headache of the unreliability of that bag actually making it to its well, own trip. And that problem, and I can speak from authority with a, my father spent you know 28 years at Boeing, was those airplanes were not initially designed to have, well, I shouldn't say not designed to hold that many people because the physics work, right? You can cram a lot of seats onto an airplane. Um, you might have to reduce some of your 
um, you know, some of the baggage and the stuff that's, you know, stowed below. But you can load up those things. But the overhead bins were not expanded or nothing was accommodated to do that. What did they do? They pulled, they kept the same size, they, they kept the same size bins. They eliminated the, the galleys. They eliminated bathrooms. They eliminated all sorts of stuff that was excess, you know, space where they could cram in more seats. And yeah, guess what? And they've made the seats closer together, not as wide and that sort of thing. And so there's actually less room under the seats to put your stuff because the seats are smaller that the airlines knew what they were doing they were creating a really you know hostile traveler experience in there in in exchange for increased profits because they controlled origin and destination markets that was how they structured their business and kind of worked cooperatively together to make sure that that happened right so yeah um that's by design, and now what do you do? Hey, I don't think they when they were doing that, they were thinking of charging for bags. It was always something they would love to be able to do, but now they've kind of facilitated where bag fees are, are something. But if you have their credit card, if you're a frequent flyer and you fly enough, and you have their credit card or whatever, you don't pay for bag fees on their you know on their flight, right? So um, they penalize the other people. And try to add these services or features that will make you quote more loyal to them. Um, and and I don't look at that as loyalty. That's just you're trying to reduce pain. And they've created pain for you. And okay, there's a way you can reduce it. But I don't necessarily make that doesn't make me loyal to that airline. Um, it may have me fly them more often, um, just because yes, I don't have to pay the stupid bag fee. But um, but yeah, I'm not loyal to them. If somebody comes in with a better product at comparable pricing, I'm on them in a second, <laughs> sort of thing, right? You know, one, thing, one thing I think that that the airlines are going to do with, uh, I think they should do first off is the NFC stuff when it comes to purchasing on the plane, okay. rather than having to dig around for your card, get it out, and so forth. Just well, take a your lot phone of them and... now are credit. Now a lot of them aren't using cash, right? Because that right. was no, there's no cash. Most of them don't even was, have yeah, cash. Yeah, it was a risk with the. There, there was fraud with the with the flight attendants, and my my wife, having been an in-flight supervisor for Northwest Airlines, knows all about all the tricks that can be done with, with <laughs> flight fraud. Um, so yeah, you can do some really you know, some really ugly things there. That's eliminated. Just having to keep track of it, the additional time for the flight attendants of having to bank that and put it in to make the deposit. All mm -hmm. all that stuff goes away. It's credit card only. But you're right. They should be accepting yeah. Apple Pay and Google Pay and that sort of thing. But you. You need pretty you know, good. They do that, though, they're, not, they're probably going to lock up the, the bathroom heads, and so you have to NFC to get in. And as soon as you do, you charge. Oh no! The plan, the bathroom. And and groups like Ryanair have discussed that and and seriously oh. considered that. The same way the airlines are looking at those saddle seats, where you don't even sit down. It's kind of like a saddle where you can cram in more, you know, more people into a you know a economy minus you know type. Uh, yes. Um, you know, well, they already have zone nine. Which is don't get on the plane with anything that you can't get, that you can't keep in your lap. The yeah. Zone Nine people, you know, it's I like did. they're last on the plane, and there is no space, and you can it don't, you can only put something underneath by your feet. There's no overhead, nothing. Can't I did anything. a blog post a long time ago. Um, somebody had a great April Fool's thing, which was basically being able to FedEx yourself to the destination. That that was the new <laughs> thing. It was the, the FedEx people pack. You know, they had the you know whatever all these different kind of packs, and uh, yeah, you just have to zip that you know in there and had some air holes, and yeah, you know, you'd, you'd show up at your destination, and it was great. Yeah, you know, worked so, much so, better than flying. And I'm like, don't yeah. show that to the airlines, for God's sake. Yeah, right. We will, don't we don't give me any kennel, idea. We will kennel you and put you down underneath. And uh, <laughs> yeah. That's, so uh, let's not miss the rut row. Let's do the rut row. Oh, you want to do the rut row? Okay. Um, the, yeah, let's do the Well, yeah, row. actually. Okay, because there were some other really. Oh, no, go big, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, no. Well, here we'll just we'll just toss it. There was the the New York um, NYU Investment Conference, so there were CEOs talking about demand and disruption and data, which was pretty interesting because, boy, not to not to throw shade on the hospitality CEOs, but a couple of them um, actually. Um, oh, Jason Fried, um, he used to be with Hotel News now, um, is now kind of the main. Um, 
editor of Duetto's blog and things like Duetto, that. So that's right. why they're they're turning out some really good content. That's that's largely Jason's uh, Jason's doing. But um, you know, the, their takeaway was hotel CEOs technology will determine the future of hospitality, which I think is completely wrong. Hospitality will determine the future of hospi of hospitality and how those technologies are applied to provide better hospitality. That's that's what's going to happen. But uh, they had that. Um, they had the industry outlook is sunny amid strong supply and demand. And boy, let me tell you, hotel occupancies quarter to date and year to date, they're only up about half a point over last year's. And yes, they're at all time record highs. But occupancy and that has plateaued out and demand supply is keeping up with demand. Supply is not getting overbuilt, which is good for the industry, but it's just basically staying staying pretty, you know, pretty still. So not not a lot of these hotel owners are like, Great, yeah, I'm I'm you know, filling a good chunk of my rooms at a record pace. Um, it's gonna be harder to get even more full. There's not there's not a lot of surplus demand. Let's put it, put it that way. Um, and all the increases are all three and a half percent ADR increases, right? It's all the rate is is what's pushing RevPAR. Yeah, you, know, you see, hey, RevPAR is up by three point seven percent. Great. How much is rate up? Oh, it's up three point six percent. So that's not great for the industry. But let me tell you, everybody is thrilled and happy and not worried anymore. Which I look at that and go, wow, that. Has, if there's a sign of a peak and some sort of downturn coming, that is it. You know, consumer confidence is high. Everything's going. I'm sitting there going, watch out, guys. It's closer. When this downturn comes, watch out <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. So um, anyway, but that's, yeah, that was the New York Investment Conference. Um, we had a thing on how Marriott's in reinventing the Sheraton brand, which is kind of interesting. That's, um, that's certainly a topic worth um, looking into. Um, we talked about the channel costs, things like, hey, Booking.com, according to Similar Web, um, is now the leading traffic um, travel site in the world, and which was kind of interesting because huge surge in Russian traffic and travel. So I don't know if the Russians are all traveling someplace or doing something or searching or doing something, or I'm, I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but uh, um, I don't think it's Russian hackers. <laughs> but um, yeah, all of a sudden, Booking.com surging ahead of uh, TripAdvisor, which is which is interesting. So um, similar web tends to exaggerate some, some counts, so I don't know. It, it may come out that they have some issues with how they're counting things, but, uh, but yeah, we'll have to have to see that. So I'm not sure if it's if people blocking cookies or, or something like that that's happening in Russia that's, uh, that's maybe skewing their numbers. But the big thing was that Booking.com had these market customized strategies, right? So they are doing things very differently in Russia than they are doing in the U.S. or France or Brazil or wherever else they may be, which is, again, outrageously smart, right? I mean, operate your business and your website the way the people in that local destination want you want it to, yeah. to work, um, boy, yeah, uh, outrageously valuable. Um, hey, uh, Focusrite has some great a great series coming up on their Focuswire um, oh site. Um, we only had part one of the series, and I think we should maybe we should wait for the series to end. I'm not sure how many parts there are. But the part one was SEO strategy, really talking about digital marketing and what's going on in search and happening there. And it's not just for for hospitality. It's also for general travel, but some really, really good um, information. Oh, there was some guy that wrote, I don't know who he was. It's, it's more about the last mile. It was in CIO <laughs> review. I thought someone on this show might want to go I don't know, deep, I don't know if that's deep a legitimate dive source. into that article. I'm not. I'm not really sure, but pretty shady. Pretty shady. I'm. I'm, be, I'm probably not based on any real factual stuff. You know, just well. Why don't you discuss to... before we do the rut rows? Why don't we talk about your article? Because you obviously took a little bit of time to, you know, sit down at the old keyboard and type something out. And CIO review happened to think it was was good enough to publish. So. Worthy enough of it. No, mine was about the last mile. Uh, it really, actually, um, so what is, what kind of is a, the last mile, Lauren? <laughs> it's, it's the connect the dots mentality of what we're doing. 
uh, the use of technology, the use of leadership, the, the, the missing gaps of uh, going back to guest centric perspective. Um, I, I guess really what I based most of the conversation on was the fact that um, I'm very tired of it happens at every conference. It happens at every round table, every think tank, every uh, thing is they start this session with. So what's keeping you up at night? You know, let's talk. Let's right. talk about what's keeping you up. At night. And I'm like, that's not what we're in this industry for. We're right. in this industry because we enjoy what we do. We wake up with optimism. We wake up with, wow, I like what I do. I like the, the joy that we give uh, in being in this industry. And it really is more about what gets you up in the morning. What is it that's exciting about all this? And, and my last mock conversation was really about the, the, we get fascinated by the shininess of technology. We get a lot of what we talk about on the show. Really, it was it's such an easy thing to just translate it into a thousand word document, uh, where it's like you know you get infatuated with the methodologies and the processes. You lose sight of the purpose of those things. And the right. last mile is connecting all of these things to how does it benefit the guest? At the end of the day, what what improvement does it give for the guest experience? And right. and it's so easy to dismiss this stuff. With while well, I'm on a roadside hotel that's a box uh, right. with no notable feature, uh, what I don't care. I mean, as long as the rooms are clean, the rate is right, and the locate and the lights stay on. What what is all this other stuff? And, and that is stuff, so that's, wrong. So yeah, wrong. <laughs> it is. You actually can impact somebody's life in a, such oh. a positive way, being exactly in that location. Than if you're at a five star location on the top of the most grand mountain or the beautiful island, because you 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 are. It's personality, it's people. The last mile is the people. The last right. mile is the, is the interaction of your guests, of your relationship with your guests. That smile at the front desk rather than all, the monotone dismissal. You know? All those customer uh, touch points, right? Every time yeah. you're interact, be it on a website or, or whatever, and maybe it's virtual, or it's in the real world face-to-face, -face, all those times the, the guest is interacting with every aspect of your – is key and i go back to my journeys end days where yeah i running you know economy running marketing for this economy lodging chain great product interior corridors inexpensive but quality solid wood furnishings good beds two sinks in the room you know all sorts of really really great not extravagant design but really you know solid um, workspace with a desk with a good light over it all those the basics that you really wanted in the hotel but the key to that were the were the managers because those things operated with only you know 18 full-time equivalents sort of thing for these properties but people would come through it was their only time in Chicou in Chicoutimi, Quebec right or <laughs> or Prince um, wherever it might be Regina Saskatchewan or something like that right all these different um, places they they don't know anything about that town they didn't research it it's not their vacation it's from going from point A to point B and let me tell you the desk clerk or the general manager could change people oh well what are you interested in eating oh I don't know I love Chinese but I'm not gonna be able to find anything here in Winnipeg oh no 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 let me oh, tell no. you this is the <laughs> Yeah, well, hey, have you ever tried Vietnamese? There is a drop dead amazing place. Only the locals know about it. Yeah, you know, sort of thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, some of that you can have people rely rely on their phone. Let them rely on Yelp. Let them do whatever. Or you can have a face to face conversation from an expert who lives in that city, who knows everything, right. that's, or hopefully, right? Who likes people, who is hospitable, who likes to welcome guests and make them more comfortable and have better stays. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's that's where you can really, really do it. And guess what? That's not gaming your reviews and doing this and and having some sort of little scheme to go. Hey, we're only going to ask you to publish a review on TripAdvisor when we know it's going to be a good one, right? And if you had anything negative happen, we're going to send you down another channel where that only goes to us. No, just do everything straight up. It's fine, right? You can go you can go do it straight and people give you great reviews. They go, I did, and their expectations are so low, right? They aren't expecting, they're expecting any... They're to deliver what you, they think that they, you, they're, you're offering. It's not they like they're, not, they're asking you yeah. to start resort. They may not be expecting because of the rate to even have a clean room. I mean, who knows what their <laughs> expectations are? But you look at it and go, wow, this place is really clean. The staff was great. If you provide breakfast, the breakfast was really good. They had good variety. And it, 
This is a you know, fantastic okay. place. A, per, a perfect example of this because I'm driving out to Houston for high tech, which we we got to make sure we talk right. a little bit about as well, and all the rest. And we go through Mobile, and there is a residence in there. And I've told you I've complimented them that before as being the place when I drove the truck when we're moving yeah. back from Dallas, to Florida, and that it highlighted that the parking lot had a way to turn around with without yeah, having absolutely. to back up. Yeah, I'm like ah, oh, it's great. There is, there, we all know minimum brand standards. That's it. That's a common term in the yeah, industry yeah. as to what is required for your brand flag. Right. Um, this breakfast is three steps beyond that. Always, always has oh. been. Oh, because but, they, 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 but they don't have the their minimum stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they but have that's a problem when you uh, exceed really brand good. standards. Though you can get slapped down by some brands who say you can't go do the whole hot buffet thing because that's violating the brand standards, and people are going to go expect those at our other hotels, and they're going to be disappointed right. other places. So don't you know do what? that. I, right? I, I will. I will argue that with any brand any days. Like then raise your standard. If if that's the case, oh. then if you if any any hotel any hotel that wants to do good business in a competitive market has to be better than the, the, the competition in market. And right. if you know as a, a breakfast offering flag what your other breakfast offering flags or uh, your competitors are offering and you're just offering the same, you're not creating a differentiation. This hotel Ooh. has decided to go over and say, we're not just going to do sausage for two days in a cycle like most residents in do. We're going to do sausage and we're going to do uh, uh, links or bacon and we're going to do egg yeah. sandwich, egg muffins along with scrambled eggs. And they yeah. go and do all these variety of things. And it's like, and oh, and, and they have some of the attendant will make the waffles for you so that you're not Absolutely. standing there like a door for two right. minutes. You know, they're like, as you go up to the waffle thing, they're like, oh, let me know where you are. I'll have it. I'll bring it over to you as soon as it's done. Or, and they or if run they the do that, they can go, hey, would you like some blueberries or strawberries in there or chocolate? Yeah, that too. They have fresh or fruit mixer. and also yeah. more than one waffle machine, which is, again, brands that I have a waffle machine, which means when they do the, the, the uh, kettle call trough in the morning where everybody yeah. comes down and descends that one half hour and tries to shove all the food and bring it back up to the room or whatever, yeah. Yeah. they have two waffle machines running, That and the attendant is running. They invest in more than just one attendant huffling food out, yeah. Uh, and they're put, they're handing the waffles out. They, they they have fruit as a choice, and it's like I'm making a point to stay at this hotel. Right. Now there's three other hotels literally across the street from each other, yeah. and I don't, I'm not driving a truck anymore to get to the parking lot, so I don't really need that usability that this place had. I can stay at any one of them and have about the same rate. I'll pay to stay at this hotel because I know this is what they do, right? And that's yep. what brings up. And it's not because of Marriott reward points or anything like this. It's literally because I like this hotel. I know where it's at. I know how easy it is to get to. And yep. this is what they do for breakfast. And for me, when I'm driving, I want to get on the road again. Breakfast is the easiest thing. I don't have to find some place to go. I just go and I know what I get. So, and that's it. Yeah. And that is loyalty, right? You are loyal to that hotel, yeah, right? To that yeah. hotel. Yep, and you aren't there very often, but look at what they're doing. The, your customer lifetime value to that hotel is incredible because they're getting a hundred percent share of wallet every time you're driving through, and you can't. Can get... Midwest. Yep, that's where I stay. Mobile is my my halfway cup point, and that's the hotel yeah. that I go to. And yeah, we could shorten our trip and stay in Pensacola or something, and we, we may go other places just to go to other places. But if it's like we're going to Houston for for the conference and yeah, stuff, that's your uh, first and beyond. That's our stop. That's where we're going, and when we come back. We're going back through there again, and it's going to be the same thing. So, wow. yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and so, uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. It's the well, and, that, and, and that is an area that is really underdeveloped in the hotel, and a lot of different people have tried attacking that whole the drive market thing of really figuring that out. And I, I know a guy who's trying to raise money to do it, right? And he's got a, he's got a clever angle on it, but that is so hard and so valuable. Right to just go. This is the place to go if you're driving from point A to point B. This is and that's the stuff that I wish Google would highlight, right, and be able to pull out that sort of stuff without without going. Well, they they don't advertise with us, so let's bury it, right? I mean, that's that's the real thing. There is actually data, and and mm -hmm. there's three places in data for Google My Business that you can use this within your paid campaign right. program. Yeah. There's the, the, the searchability where you can see on your Google My Business the zip codes or origins of people that were doing inquiries to your location, which is one thing in itself. Yeah. The other is, and this is just old school stuff, what's your drive range? Make, take, a, take a map and slap it on the wall and make a big circle on yeah, distances of roads and what roads it come from and yeah. literally highlight 
everything from between the two, that anything past a six hour mark right. to a 12 hour mark is yep. your interim drive range. Right. For, I mean, that, that four hour window of distance on a circled map on yep. major road arteries is your, your rate, your, I used to call it the Aurora, because that was our drive market Aurora of, okay, this is the areas that if we're going to do drive market uh, stuff and then, and then isolate it out by zip code. And then right. isolate it out by demographics. But Google will help you with some of that. Oh, but sure. also, uh, uh, in, in the interim of where your location is, anything of, of that same radiant is the halfway point for everything. So you can market both sides of it as an interim point. And then, depending upon the clientele that you're trying to draw in, mm -hmm. you start isolating them with the other filters. It, it, there is yeah. ways to drive the drive market. You are, you are the destination B between A and C. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. and if you look at something, if you, if you really understand again, your customer base. And if you are in a in a roadside, off an interstate at some sort of major intersection or even a minor intersection, if you need to understand who's driving up and down that road, right? And it isn't yep. just a matter of putting a sign on this, you know, a billboard on one side and one on the other. Um, it's really the case of figuring out, oh, well, these guys are in Florida and Sturgis is happening for the big, you know, the big Harley Davidson thing. Um, yeah, here's where a thing comes. Stay here. I, Best Western did a very, very good job of working with Harley um, on basically saying we have a bunch of bike friendly hotels, and they worked with them on on scenic drives and things like that, which were which were great. And here are places you can stay. Um, now, again, they were kind of working with Best Western, so was it necessarily the coolest, best independent that nobody's ever heard of? No, probably not. But Best Western was doing everything right on their side. You know, I kind of put that on Harley to say, well, yeah, you made it easy and you put all the effort on, yeah, the work was done by Best Western to do this. And kudos to them because what did they do? They put pens in so people could lock their bikes securely, right, in a secure area. They gave them, um, you know, when, when they checked in, they here's a bottle of water and things like that. Here's a hose where you can rinse off your bike. All the things that are that are really important to people who, you know, ride motorcycles, right? So right. just right. like you said with the moving sort of thing, you go, hey, here's a thing where people are driving cross country and they're moving, doing whatever. I mean, you can start looking at things from, from different, um, oh, uh, colleges and universities, or post graduation, yeah, whatever the case may be. And again, I've got a I've got a hotel just like that in Springfield, Illinois, and same thing. I used it like three times, right? Which is, I have normally no use to be in Springfield, Illinois, but we used it when we were driving down, and it was like, yeah, we took it when my daughter moved, when we moved stuff, and it was great. It had the thing for, you know, being able to come in and out, being able to park a pretty good moving truck when you were towing a car behind it um and mm -hmm. when we had the the linchpin for me was um when we had our the first trip we had the engine check light come on on the fully loaded moving truck which is not something you want to have happen <laughs> sort of thing and you know called rider they did it and or not rider um penske i'm sorry Penske, we pulled it. The hotel said, oh, don't worry about that because these guys were going to come some time. We pulled in at 1 a.m. eventually, sometime around 3. They're like, no, no, give us the keys and we'll do this. Who are you looking for? Tell them to check with us. They handled it, right? And all I know is I went to sleep at 1.30 in the morning and woke up at 7.30 or something and the truck was done and the keys were there and I didn't have wow. to go out in the middle of the night or do any of that stuff. And you could go, and wait, well, yeah, is that violating a brand standard because they they took a customer's keys to their – you could have liability if that truck got right. stolen. Don't do that. Don't help. They helped the guest, right? right. And they, and and they helped the, the guy who was waiting for the guest who had to come repair the truck or check it or turn off the light or whatever they had to do. You know, they made that and, easier and faster too. So, yeah. And this, and this goes this goes to a lot of where people are asking, and, and we're, I know we're focusing on limited services properties in our conversation. But this goes for any hotel. But they never get any where attention. Take, it's always the luxury hotels. If you've got right, yeah. you've got four hundred staff for your two hundred rooms, and you're charging right. eight hundred bucks a night, yeah, you better do a great job because <laughs> right. they're paying for. It. But, but again, but, but yeah, you might get no, better no, service. No, no, no. 
you could, and I and I would tell my friends at Four Seasons because I went from Four Seasons to Journey's End. Go. How often do people see a hotel general manager? You know, yeah. With this one, you've got a better than fifty. You've got a seventy-five percent chance of directly interacting with a with a hotel general manager at a Journey's End yes. than you do in Four Seasons. I mean, and oh, not, yeah. they're, they're not they're doing things. They're, just, they're hidden. Away. They're in their office. They're in yeah. meetings. They're dealing with. They're hiring a new food and beverage director. Who knows what they're doing, they're never, right? Right. No, yeah. but this goes to to conversations we have about you know we're we're a hotelier and we have the, we, you speak to the same people I speak to. It's like, well, you want me to do video stuff? What am I going to do video about? I, I'm not going to make another commercial. What am I going to do with it? These aren't about commercial videos. This is about right. what you talk about with your truck. With what I talk about with the truck is you know what you know it's a feature building like the, the hotel i'm talking about in mobile if they know it's a feature building so right. uh, i told them and i don't think they've done it or they, they did i haven't seen it yet where i said go out and do a, a facebook live or a video recording of saying hey everyone this is such and such a residence in a mobile if you're traveling by truck Excellent. we got a parking lot you're gonna love first off it's really easy to come so if you're coming late at night and you're dead dog tired you don't have to worry about right. getting into a dead end road or something you come yeah. here here's the intersection and then when you pull into the parking lot, we really are left. easy on, easy <laughs> off sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're right here. And then in the back, we have extra uh, parking lot lights. So when you park it back there, you don't have, you know, the lights are on. We have a nighttime security guy. He's, and yeah. this is what's in the video. And so right. that gets on and, and gets shared. And it's like, wow, you just answered one of my worries. It wasn't whether it was $10 or $20 different compared to another hotel. It's, I'm coming in. I know I'm going to get there about nine or 10 wow. o'clock at night. And I'm going to be tired, and I don't want to go and get lost and have to back up a big truck or something. And right. you just told me how to get there and where to park. That's perfect. And and if you know your competition, right, maybe your competition has a little driveway where there are ditches on each side or something, which, again, if you're driving a moving truck and towing a car behind it, a lot of people aren't good at that. <laughs> and, nope. and I'm sure I'm you look around me. and go, look, at they're, pulling someone, they're pulling someone else out of the ditch sort of yeah. thing if you can capitalize on that like look at you don't have to worry about that if you're towing you got plenty of room sort of thing or if you want local restaurants we know where they are here's what we recommend yeah whatever the case may be or the other ones have crappy breakfasts or they aren't as clean or the whatever the case may be you can you can lay that out and uh and, and if, again if you do it consistently yeah, you do it consistently. Yeah. You tag it. You you not just do the video. You post it on on YouTube. You put the script down there so you have all the text, so that can all get considered. So all of a sudden, Google and YouTube can figure out. Oh, I know what that's about, and yeah, that makes that's great. You made it easier for me interpreting oh, what's in the here's what's in else. The thing. Here's something else the other residents in does, and I thought it was a very because they they take it. They have a nice little pet walk that's well lit. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. All right. And they keep it clean. I, I can't begin clean, to tell yeah. you how many times that I go to a friendly hotel and wherever you walk, there's stuff everywhere. And it's like it's oh, like yeah. a landmine. I clean up after my dog, and I don't appreciate that others don't. But the right. same token, even for those who don't, they clean up after them. They also well, always you keep. You can, have the, you can have the person like the general. Hi, I'm general manager of this. We love our project. You know what the worst part of my job is? Is cleaning up after people who have we have this great dog park and they don't. But you know what we do because it's the worst part of my job and it's going to be the best part of your dog walk. Right. And please, you know, give me a break. And, <laughs> you know, whatever. And, and you can do it nicely and funny and engagingly and be human about it. And people appreciate. Yeah. It. They go, this place loves pets. Wow, that's great. Right. They're doing it, and they love pet owners by not making it walk through the minefield in the middle of the night because the dog has to go out. Sort of thing, and, so. and and two things. One is in the pet walk, at the farthest end, they put a water a spigot bowl area so that they can yeah. have fresh water out there. And yeah. if you're checking in and you've already assigned that you you have your pet with you, they have a little welcome tag to put on the door, obviously for housekeeping, wow. which is normal. But they have pet yeah. treats for you, you know, right? Because they yeah. know your dog long travel too. These are the yeah. things that make. It's a residence freaking in. It's like right. every other thing going on. But those are little differences is why when I go any direction that I have to stay as mobile as my intern point, that's where I stay. Because well, that and, I know what I'm going to get. Well, and they're they're more expensive probably than the competition because residence is traditionally a long term stay place and things like mm -hmm. that. So they they have to charge a higher rate probably all things being equal just pure development costs and things like that they have to command a higher rate than these guys next door to them where you have brands that go 
well, yeah, that's all I need. That's going to be just just fine for me. Right. You know, even if it was another Marriott, you go a courtyard, a Fairfield's great. A Fairfield would be fine, but you go, no, I'm willing to pay whatever the premium. I'm willing to pay twenty percent more for that residence in. It was great, right. and they do. Yep. They'll do things like they'll have, you know, sometimes little sports courts or putting greens or whatever. You know, some sort of little barbecue. You know, yeah. yeah, barbecues, yeah. things like that. Again, for the people who are staying a long time. Those are nice little, you know, nice little things to add. But for you, that residence inn wasn't designed for people on a one night stay driving cross country at all. No. But they've but been it, very it, smart about going, this is a market segment or pet owners, pets drive up the operational cost sort of thing. So they can be a disaster. They can deserve, a, they can distract other guests. But yeah, by giving the pet treats, and I would maybe take that and have that analyzed for to see if they, they put in some sort of sedative. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. But, then, no, yeah. but they might figure out, hey, this is not a treat that gets pets wild and oh. going nuts. It's just like it makes them happy. They go to sleep. They had a little snack um, because hey, who knows? By, by they the way, had, yeah. one, of the they did, one of the things they did when we were going back and forth a lot between Dallas and here before we moved down, because we were going back, we were going back and forth. I don't know four or five times in one year. Is I think the third or the fourth time I happened to hit the same evening check-in person, which wasn't the GM. Uh, if anything, they might have been the night auditor early or something like that. Right. And they, they when they looked down and saw that this was a whatever third or fourth it was, and I was yeah. with the pet and so forth, they're like, yeah. "Oh wow, you've been with us a few times." It's, you know what? We're not going to charge you the pet fee this time because you're only checking out tomorrow. Don't worry about it. I'm like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> You know, you do yeah. that, and you get what you get with me. It's like, I'm well, going to yeah. be back. And, I'm going to be back. And if they have that history that you've stayed there three or four other times and had a pet, and there was never a mess or anything like I mean, if they have that degree of information, which they probably didn't, I'm guessing. No. But if you have no, that, that's, like, it, no. yeah, that's a low that risk. Really that is a low risk gimme to the – to the, mm -hmm. the the traveler who really appreciates it, and the next time you go in, are you going to go? Last time I didn't pay the pet fee. I'm not going to pay it again. No, you love the place. No. It's great. You're, yeah. You just You're appreciate like, hey, it. Like, it was a nice business. thing you did for me last time, you know. Uh, and then we know it's revenue for them, but it's like by the same token, we're checking in late in the evening and leaving the next day. The yeah. odds of something like that, you know, like you said, residence in there's long for long duration. Now, I do know that they they go with a lot of crews, like a lot of uh, cable crews and so forth, and they yeah. have a couple of barbecues oh, awesome. out by the pool. They have yeah. a little basketball court, and I think those were actually made because of that and they, because there's always crews that are out there. But these are yeah, nice guys. They're, they're blue-collar workers and so forth, but the place is kept clean. It's not run down. It's, it's no. just all the things that we come well, back every time we go through. And by doing that, you go, oh, my God. And I'm sure there are owners who are going, oh, no, we aren't going to have – we aren't going to have crews because there's going to be partying and beer stuff. No, no. You know, they're, they're going to have their setup and, you know, whatever, uh, the set, whatever's for breakfast and some of them will do a little happy hour or, you know, whatever the case may be, depending on the brand. And you go, no, they're treating the guests with respect and it's quiet and everybody's kind of doing this. And this is the kind of, hotel. there are families there. And no, these guys aren't going to feel good about having some wild, crazy, tear up the property party because they they're in the same it. area. They park in the same area, which gives still space for people like me with trailers and stuff. They right. probably uh, cluster them together, you know. Yep. And, oh, absolutely. And, and keep the diversity of the breakfast probably because these crews are there for long stretches and yeah. getting the same shit every day just makes them grumpy. They so that's why the, the and the crews are going to be on their best behavior because they don't want to mess up a good thing. This is right. beneficial for them. Because like, they certainly have don't stuff send to me over to the dirty dump that's horrible. No, right. no, I'll stay here. This is this is great. And it's thing. funny how when you treat people well, it kind of goes back full circle to the, the conversation about the last mile thing. If it's about the satisfaction of the guest experience, it's a win for everybody because guests, people don't walk around by nature being purposely mean. They walk around right. getting mean because they're not trusted or they're treated unfairly. Uh, right. And so if you treat them with both of those considerations, you're going to find it reciprocated in what ways that they can. Like you said, yeah. but because they waived a pet fee for me once, I don't walk in every time next time and say, well, you didn't charge me last time. Hey, right. it was a gift. Then, you know, so anyway, we, yeah, or, we, at the, well, or at we, the next or at the next residence in you go, I never pay a pet. Fee. Now, some people do that. Right. I mean, which is just horrible. And and they don't 
they always get charged a pet fee and they never had the experience and it was never waived. It's a scam, right? So there is some of some of that, but part of it is like be hospitable, do the nice thing, do the right thing and and go. And Ooh. yeah, if somebody gets the pet fee waived and then trashes the place, yeah, there should be some sort of notation hopefully on their account that goes, Hey, yeah. here they are again, don't you know Right. Don't reinforce they're, they're, they're gonna crash the place. They have a they have a cat that shreds the legs of the, the chairs or something. But hey, before yeah. we because we, we well we we kind of ran a little long. Um, uh, next, not next week, week after. High tech, rock. Yes. Uh, I have a hoa on Friday. Um, well, I want to speak right. a little bit about that real quick. This is that I, I get to play keynote, and my keynote is kind of a continuation of our conversation we've had before between the use of technology and its its purpose in leadership, and mm-hmm. my contention. Uh, my, my premise of the whole process is, is that uh, being a manager isn't a leader, and a leader it doesn't have to be a manager. And right. technology is use is not to create good leaders; it's to make great leaders better. Right. Uh, so that's my contest. Said. But then in the afternoon, they're going to do a real fun session called Shark Tank. Now they have 160 people doing this, and okay. there's four major uh, a hundred, sharks. That are going to be on stage. 160. Pitches? Yes. Oh, well, dear. no. This is what's going to happen. Is they're going to take the 160 people, and there's going to be eight topics, and the topic is going to be randomized onto the tables of 10. So two tables will get the same topic. So there, oh, there's okay. two tables competing on the same topic. The ideology of it is, is that you are pitching to a 100-room hotel in, in an urban-based setting your topic, which will be – a uh, solution for front desk improvement, a solution for housekeeping, a solution for finance, a solution for revenue management, a solution for digital marketing, whatever. There's eight right. topics. Now, the right. two tables have a very brief period to coordinate what they think they want to pitch, and then the two tables will rep up to the sharks, and the sharks will be choose between the two for the same topic, which one they like. Right. Ah, okay. And I'm, and I'm the moderator. I get to go over and keep the, the, the cats all herded in the same direction for that one. Oh, that will be very... Very cool. I wish I could. I could be there. I'm actually driving back home on that uh, that I'm Thursday Friday. night. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. So I'm out. Out then. I am on that night. On that Thursday night, um, I'm going to go see Dave Chappelle and John Stewart, though. Uh, you said that. They're out in Sugarland. Yeah, which I'm looking oh, yeah. looking forward to. So which I should have arranged it with some, but there was only this one single seat that was like. Right there, so I'm sure I'm sure scalpers have you know certainly available available seats. So somebody's at my front door, and I'm by myself. Hmm. I might have to say that we're going to be ending the show now. But um, hi, I, I tell a little well, bit about high tech. Well, I'm going to go see my front door real quick. I'm just I'm going to uh, pause my camera and my microphone, talk a little bit about high tech, and I'll be right back. Sorry. Let's talk about. High tech. Okay, so on behalf of hospitality, financial, and technology professionals, um, the high tech conference is running, I believe, from. Uh, June 18th through 21st in Houston at the um, convention center downtown. Um, and it's going to be a big event. They're, they have lots of co-sponsored uh, um, or co-hosted events. Um, HSMAI has a revenue optimization conference, which I believe is on the Wednesday. I'm not attending that um Oh, this year I'm um, bound up with a bunch of high tech uh, stuff instead. So, um, but uh, yeah, the great trade show. You want to see the um, and well, hi, the way high tech structured that you can basically get an exhibits pass where they have a very large trade show floor and certainly um, lots of exhibits and lots of people running around. And I think half of it is the conversations of people who are in the uh, you know who are attending. The, just the networking aspect of it, but um, that's always yeah. great. And they have extended. Oh, I'm I'm giving a rundown of a uh, of high tech. They also have um, an educational track where you pay a little bit more, but they have some great great presentations, great speakers on that. And then um, also HSMAI has the Revenue Optimization Conference um, as well, which draws about well, high tech draws about six or seven thousand people typically. I'm not sure about Houston in the middle of the summer. Um, we'll see. Probably not as big a crowd as an Orlando or a uh, or an Anaheim, but but who knows? Um, we'll see. They had a good turnout in Toronto, um, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how big big the attendance is. But uh, yeah, they do a great job and. We'll make some fake badges for you for Rock. We'll just sneak you in that way. You, you know, we 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's all to always to, 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 yeah. Really, really think that. I do, I do refuse to be the the lobby lizard of just sitting out there outside and hanging out in the things or hanging out for hot coffee breaks and things like that because not we'll just because people, our, people right know me together. and that sort of thing. It's just like I don't want to be that guy. I know too many yeah. people who are that guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ed said he's going to join uh, High Tech this year, and we know Stuart's already there because they have the booth. Uh, right. and, I, and I know Holly's going to be there because she's going to be doing the uh, uh, CAH, uh, the uh, certification retraining program for the digital ah. marketing certification. Wow. So, well, the, pretty much the gang will be there in that sense. Um, I have to uh, wrap up only because I, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we have roofers up uh, fixing the roof, and they need access to uh, my section of the roof, I guess. So i got to go over and actually open up the back and let them through and all that kind of fun stuff. So, so no, Mr. That's, Robert, that's in, inconveniencing you, and no, they yes, can go. Yeah, uh, right now, with the rain season as it is in Florida, and the fact there's a big, I guess, gaping hole in the roof. Um, yeah, I kind of I'm motivated to have them fix the roof in time for you know whatever that is. So, uh, okay, set set just, your priorities accordingly. So, yeah, we don't yeah. have to do the the rut row was on loyalty. Uh, yeah, and the cost we'll of loyalty up. programs, which. Lauren, we never bring them back up. You say that. That is dishonest to tell our viewers that you were going to do that. They never come back. <laughs> hey, actually, you know what? If you want, I made you administrator. You can wrap the show up, and I can just No, 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 no. There's no, there's no, um, this is, what I did, though, want to just a real quick rut row on here is uh -huh. basically the point uh, Marino Hanlon basically came out and said, hey, um, you know what? When you get paid for these rooms for people staying with loyalty programs. These online travel agencies are giving you full value and the hotel brands are only giving you partial value. That's not right. Which was yeah. like, Oh, that's why I said rut row. <laughs> 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 Mr. Yeah. Robert, if people want to know more about you, where can they find you? Rockcheetah.com or social media, Robert K. Cole. Robert K. Cole. For the replay of this show, archives of all the other shows, all the topics, including the Rut Row, that I, I promise we get to, but we never did. Uh, they can go to Hospitality We, did. we covered Marketing. it all. That's all people need to know. We did. That's true. <laughs> we did. Hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash 148, which is the episode number. Or you can go to hospitalitydigitalmarketing.com forward slash live for all uh, links to all of our old shows, including this one. Uh, our apologies to uh, Miss Holly for uh, running out of time, not getting her on the show today. <laughs> and Stuart. And Tim. And Stuart. And, and Tim. Alan. And, I think and, we and lost Ed Darlene. Darlene Alan. somewhere just fall, fell off the, the side. I don't know yeah, what Darlene was there for a bit. Um, but anyway, to everyone, thank you so much for watching the show. Uh, Harper, thank you for joining us. Uh, look forward to seeing you next month when I get to bring you out on our boat. We go run around and you can point at all the directions to drive the boat. Um, and for everyone watching the show, uh, next show, number 149, next Friday, 1130 Eastern, 1030 Central. Uh, Mr. Robert, thank you so much for all the topics today. Which, and I've always which, unfortunately may, which unfortunately may not feature Harper, which I don't know. People are going to be saying, send more yeah. Harper. <laughs> we want I was going to say, we might, have, we, might, we might have hit a peak today that we just can't maintain. Who knows? But I, until then. I certainly think Yep. Thank you, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Right. <laughs>